This is Cybert signing into Red Alert 3 on the map. Corporate Warfare for game number one of this subscriber replay showcase in the North, playing as the Cyan Empire. This is Yuno. And their teammate as the Orange, playing the Soviets. This is Chris. Yuno and Chris in the North. Meanwhile, in the South as the Green. This is Fury, and their teammate as the Purple Allies. This is A and F. A and F and Fury versus You Know and Chris. And wouldn't you know, we get an actually different map here in Red Alert Three. It's a two v two. But it's not on Pool Party, and I am pretty happy about that. Double Empire, one Soviet, one Allied player. So a pretty nice distribution of factions as well. Fury and ANF. We'll see how they're feeling today. It feels like Yuno and Chris might be the stronger team. But to be honest, I don't know when this game was played. This game could have been played a good while ago. Uh, I am, again, quite behind in my replay, so... If you've sent me a replay and I haven't gotten to it yet, it means that I'm still somewhere back in time and I just haven't gotten to your replay yet. So this game could be quite old. Chris gets a couple kills with his bears. Meanwhile, burst drones, peacekeepers, and imperial warriors going to be clashing on the left side of the map. Double expansions out on the water, something to keep in mind with this map. You can expand to two refineries relatively quickly. Mecha Bay is up. One of the bridges has been taken down. The other bridges do survive for the current moment. You can target the bridge gatehouse and eliminate the whole bridge at once. Vindicator comes by, does not actually drop any bombs. Javelin Soldier does get killed out of that building, and Imperial Warriors will be able to take over that building eventually there. Expansion is ready to be taken by Fury. He's got his bridge capture all set up. I assume he's going to engineer cap that bridge to restore it. I'm not sure what his plan is and why. Whoa! Mecha Bay super duper late here from Fury. So Fury, whatever he was doing for the first part of this game, has super delayed his Mecha Bay. Meanwhile, refinery ready to deploy. A&F gets his third refinery up and running. Apollo and Tangu going to be facing off. Yuno loses the Tangu, and there's going to be the bridge restored. He actually did want to restore that bridge. Imperial Warriors, Tank Busters going to be charging across. Chris, he is aware of this. His MCV is there. His refinery is waiting. Fury taking the middle of the map, carving up some of those buildings. This bridge has been successfully killed by Yuno. No expansion on the high ground just yet from Yuno. Yuno might want to take the more dangerous low ground expansion there, which is uh, kind of close to your opponent's base. Walls are now getting established. Chris going to try and defend himself. Tangus in decent numbers, five or six of them in total. And F with a very nice defensive setup. The Javelin soldiers inside of the building help tremendously. No walls on this side, which means when Tangus get dropped down, the Javs will be able to help defend that area. Fury going for the attack. Chris going for the block off, using a barracks under construction to help keep this refinery and the harvester safe. Sickle will go down. He does let the barracks finish, which is kind of curious. He does restart the barracks and get another body block going on. Tangus from Yuno going to be clearing out that barracks. MCV packs up and heads for the hill. Fury has completely shut down this high ground expansion. A complete crushing of any attempt that Chris had. Although the second bridge is about to go down, Yuno is on a bridge killing mission today. Going to be shutting down both of these expansions on the high ground there. Cutting off access from Fury. Meanwhile, the refinery does still stand, but maybe not for too much longer. An Imperial Warrior blocking off that wall, but not going to be blocking off the area in front of the wall. And Chris just adding more and more stuff to try and block off these tank busters, but it just isn't going to work. 
It looks like barely that sentry gun will get canceled. The roar comes off and Chris actually saves his refinery. I cannot believe that Chris was able to save that refinery. Meanwhile, a and F takes the corner expansion in the north. This is going to give him a very close striking position to Yuno, who has been operating on two refineries for pretty much this entire time. Third refinery coming up, maybe a fourth refinery swiftly after that. We shall see. Refinery from Chris is still standing. I cannot believe he has maintained control of that refinery this entire time, almost losing it. Vindicators coming in. Are they going on a bombing run to just clear out that refinery once and for all? They may be able to do it in one single pass. Goodbye. Finally, Chris loses his refinery, which is sad for Chris, but you have to respect all of the effort, and that's a lot of Tangus going down. You have to respect the effort that Fury put into killing off that refinery. Tangu gets infected in the south. Gonna get shut down there. Nicely done by Fury. Has to sacrifice his own Tangu, but he does it swiftly enough. Hammer Tank Sickles moving through the middle of the map. Tier 2 on the Mecha Bay. I assume we have a super reactor up and running. We do, as well as an airfield for Chris. So Chris, despite the weak economy, he is well set up with his infrastructure. Cryo Shot comes in. Doesn't actually get the harvester and doesn't, of course, freeze the refinery either. Second refinery is not up and running just yet on the high ground for you know. Apollo's moving out. Hammer Tank's moving south, going for the kill on one of Fury's low ground expansions. Is a dangerous spot to try and hold, but if you can hold it, it can be a good spot to launch attacks from. But in this case, Fury is just getting crushed here in the middle of the map. He's got that oil derrick on the high ground. No, it's an observation post on the high ground. His oil derrick is here getting cleaned up. So that there goes his only oil derrick. Hammer Tank getting torn apart. And actually, this tank buster doing a ton of damage to Chris's army. Meanwhile, Assault Destroyer coming in. A and F bringing the pain and just overrunning Yuno, who gets a good kill on at least one cryocopter. No, he gets both of the cryocopters. Very nicely done there by Yuno, and unfortunately for ANF, he hasn't cleared out this refinery just yet, so he can't move on to killing other targets. He's going to get infected. The Tesla coil and the terror drone going to make short work of that assault destroyer. Tier 3 on the airfield, so we have the possibility of aircraft carriers as well for a and F. He can bring those EMPs and those aircraft carrier drones. Bear comes forward, Imperial Warrior goes down, second Imperial Warrior goes down, but it's gonna be the Chopper VX that gets the kill. Fury able to shut down that bridge, stop any more reinforcements from crossing, except of course, the ones that can fly. Tangus are here, they're gonna transform, get the kill on that striker, and going to be able to push down the ramp potentially. No, they're actually completely cut off. I forgot there's a second bridge there. And so that is now completely cut off. He's gonna have to drop, drop, a, drop a barracks or oh. Engineer is actually already on the way. And up has his fourth refinery up and running, or I guess actually his fifth refinery, as his first aircraft carrier steps out onto the battlefield. Some Apollos are nearby. First, first barrage from the aircraft carrier. Able to do some damage to that ore refinery. Puts it almost dead, but not quite. First hydrofoil pops on out. These Tangus can't keep the aircraft carrier drones away forever. They can't even save that refinery. Yuno goes down another refinery, down to just two plus an oil derrick. Airport in the middle of the map captured by Fury, so he's got that at least, helping out his ally. And this is a ton of air units, mostly Tangus, but a couple of choppers as well for Yuno. Sudden transport on the move. We'll try and keep an eye on exactly uh, where that guy is going. Striker's going for the kill on that Tangu, but the Tangus will get it. Where are you going, Sudden Transport? Is there a Eureka inside of that? Who even knows? Tier 2 Naval Yard in the south. Aircraft carrier continuing to make bombing runs. You know, 
getting trashed here. Both refineries under fire. One has been eliminated. The second one under threat. Satellites getting called in, and it's going to be an all-out go for the kill. He gets the MCV of Fury Uno. Going to be able to shut down the Mecha Bay as well, and killing that Mecha Bay might pretty much kick Fury out of this game. There goes a fully heroic Striker VX, and I hope whatever he's got inside of this sudden transport is worth it because he's about to be losing everything back at home. a and is going to be close to playing this one out in a 1v2. Mecha Bay is under fire. That fully heroic Striker is doing some massive damage. Crash lands onto a Striker on the ground and just kill the... No, kill the Mecha Bay! No, the Mecha Bay, it's a sudden transport full of tank busters. And the Mecha Bay will go down. The Strikers get eliminated, but at what cost? The MCB is going to have to be rebuilt from this naval yard. And Fury doesn't have much left after that. Yuno getting knocked around. The MCV having to run for the hills. I'm not sure if he ever fully chased down that MCV. No, it's been here on the high ground. One refinery down. Power plant under threat, but the aircraft carrier is not going to be in range just yet. He's going for the Tesla coil, trying to clean that up. One refinery down on the high ground. Fresh refinery has been established. Twin Blades trying to save this army. This really is a two-hander from these guys. Both teams working together to attack and defend here on Corporate Warfare. Tank Busters do eventually get cleaned up. It looks like that sudden transport was eliminated. Yuno keeping himself in the game with his massive Tangu army. Or Refinery getting targeted down. Cryoblast going to be firing off. Chris has found the naval yard. MCV? MCV, there we go. Fury has got his MCV out and running. Naganata's going to be going up against the Kula subs. There's more than enough Kula subs here to win this fight. And Chris is going for it. Naganata Paul pulls off. And there goes another refinery. Unfortunately for Yuno, down to just one refinery. It's basically only about the Mecha Bay that already exists because there isn't going to be much income in a minute for Yuno. Chris, on the other hand, making good progress against Fury. He almost killed Fury, or rather, Yuno almost killed Fury earlier. And now Fury is under threat once again. His only production facility pretty much is out here on the water. A C-Wing is here. The MCV is going to have to run for the hills. Twin Blades trying to target down that Spectrum Tower. And meanwhile, this C-Wing trying to target down the Twin Blades. Nice cutting off of those Akula subs. And it looks like that multi-gunner turret isn't long for this world. The Twin Blades still continuing to try and avoid those C-Wings. The MCV will be able to escape. And the aircraft carriers in the north, there's now actually two of them. But they're not targeting critical infrastructure. They've broken down the Mecha Bay already. And actually, there might be three or four aircraft carriers in total. You know, just getting absolutely crushed. Two power plants left in the main base. The MCV on the high ground trying to rebuild over at the expansion. Apollo's tearing apart those twin blades. And Chris not able to kill Fury's second MCV, but Chris was able to dislodge this expansion. Many multi-gunner turrets from a and f Fury is sort of being kept alive by a and f Even the water expansion was able to survive for so much longer because of the Spectrum Towers, because of the multi-gunner turrets that a and f deployed, helping out Fury in this game. Building gets cleared out. Mecha Bay coming back online. Yuno trying to rebuild on the high ground, but with only an oil derrick providing income, Yuno doesn't have many options left. If he could get out a refinery, he would at least have some income, but I'm not sure how long it would really last, considering how many aircraft carriers are nearby. Final Squadron gets called in by Fury. Going to be crashing onto that Harvester, doing, I guess, a little bit of damage. Chronosphere is here, out on the water for ANF. So far, ANF is pretty much unassailable by these guys. Tangus coming through, able to clean out a good number of Apollos. And just before the point defense drones expire, Twin Blades heading back home. Chris's base has been rocked by a bombing run. It looks like possibly some satellites. Uh, I guess no satellites, but possibly uh, something else falling down upon it. Ooh, Assault Destroyer gets cleaned up. Terror Drone 
going in for the kill. Two Hydrofoils are here. They will waste a couple of these Twin Blades before the Twin Blades eliminate them. Proton Collider gets added into the mix. Tangus trying to find a safe angle to engage, and the Twin Blades might just try and go for it, but now there's four Hydrofoils on the front line. Chris's main base about to get rocked by these aircraft carriers. The second bombing run is coming out, and the drones will take down the super reactor. The airfield and the tier three may be the next targets after that. The MCV on the high ground is almost, that might be the literal only building. If that MCV gets taken out, then all of those tangus go down. War Factory and Airfield both about to be eliminated. The Tangus trying to save them. The War Factory goes down and Chris fighting for his life. Dreadnoughts bombing his own buildings and units trying to eliminate those units from Fury. Chris so close to killing off Fury but was unable to close it out. More aircraft carriers, five of them in total from a and f and ANF is, might actually be losing this fully heroic one. Those Akula subs getting a couple of blasts off the Twin Blades coming in to finish the job, and that is a kill on a fully heroic aircraft carrier. Or Refinery is coming up. Fury getting attacked, and, or Fury attacking immediately. Satellites drop down, eliminate another one of Fury's uh, refineries. Actually, not satellites. Dreadnought eliminating another one of Fury's refineries. Fury, who got beaten almost de to death but barely was able to survive, is now once again on the brink of destruction with these Dreadnoughts closing in. Twin Blades in the north and Akula subs. Chris fighting a 1v1 with ANF Fury and Yuno, somewhat passengers in this game. The bridge gets respawned. Fury crosses it. Tank Busters and Imperial Warriors. This guy may not have much, but he is doing anything and everything that he can to still be a viable part of this game. Yuno calls in the point defense drones on the Tangus, gets the Dreadnought as well, and the Dreadnought pulls around to the south side of the island. Aircraft carriers repositioning, trying to chase down these bullfrogs. The drones getting taken out, and Chris has stopped the Allied naval assault. He's stopped the attacks on his own base. Meanwhile, Fury gets caught. A power plant goes down. A second power plant will be eliminated. The MCV is just about the only thing that Fury has left. Another Mecha Bay eliminated. Another refinery and another expansion into the corner. He is trying to hide things anywhere and everywhere he can muster. Kula Subs got speed when they're shrunk down. Chronosphere firing off somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where. Possibly eliminating that dreadnought. Okay, yeah. It looks like the dreadnought got clipped into a building or something. We did miss it but it looks like that was most likely what the use of that chronosphere was. The MCV goes down. There's the sell-off. This barracks is the only thing keeping Yuno in this game. No hope of rebuilding. The last refinery will get eliminated. This oil derrick has been in this game for so long for Yuno, and now it finally will go down, I think. Oh, come on, eliminate that. A building in the corner. You know with, a tr with the Empire trick of hiding a building in the corner just to keep yourself in the game. And that is very good. The barracks is there also keeping you know in the game. Fury having to split and run for it. Engineer is there. MCV did get repositioned. What a messy, chaotic game this has turned into. A and F and Chris Clearly the players in the best position. A bullfrog may go down here. One more bullfrog eliminated. A lot of these bullfrogs, uh, a couple of them going heroic. One of them going single vent. Final squadron gets called in. Tangu's going to be moving to the south. Bullfrogs and twin blades as well. A and F moving out once again. And this observation post never got taken down. So Fury has had really good vision on the expansion. Cryo Geddon fires off. Cryocopters flying over. And that's going to be a massive freeze and shutdown. He does spot one of the few remaining buildings of Yuno, but his real target is going to be that Iron Curtain. It's not enough. And Cryocopter after Cryocopter going down, just getting absolutely blasted apart by this Soviet Empire armada. 
and that was so many cryocopters going down. Perhaps 18,000 credits worth of cryocopters going down. So much cash just exploded in 50 seconds on the Proton Collider. This fully heroic dreadnought getting targeted down the airfield, the battle airfield that uh, heals air units did get eliminated at some point in the past. Tangus are here, Twin Blades, and Akula is able to overrun the Hydrofoils, and the Apollos that are here are gonna uh, not quite be able to kill off the Twin Blades because the Bullfrogs are just too numerous. EMPs locking down the Bullfrogs, only two managed to escape. Hydrofoils getting reproduced by ANF. It's the Twin Blades versus the Hydrofoils, and these Bullfrogs will allow the Apollos to actually be used Another Dreadnought going down. Chronosphere is ready to go. Proton Collider is almost ready to go, but where to use it? Tangu's transformed to kill off more of Fury's infantry. Fury, so close to being able to actually do something in this game. He's keep, he keeps trying. He's producing little squadrons of infantry, trying to find places for them to be useful. Iron Curtain ready to fire off. Chris. Another final squadron gets called in by Fury. Chris managed to save his Iron Curtain earlier in this game. Where is he going to try and use it? Chris has expanded down to the south. Two refineries about to finish up. Low power mode for just a moment there for Chris. Proton Collider firing off. Wait, where? Oh, okay, here we go. That's where it was. Clears out two refineries, doesn't get the super reactor, and no follow-up to kill off the super reactor. A couple of reactors being added on for Chris. Iron Curtain gets called in as well. Bullfrogs trying to keep these twin blades safe. Another harvester going down. Fury has been beaten to almost nothing and will be rebuilt and rebuilding again and again. Twin Blades got sent somewhere. Or Bullfrogs, oh, they just got sent over here. He didn't actually clip them into a building or anything. I thought he was gonna clip them into one of these buildings to just destroy them, but Fury's MCV goes down. The Naval Yard is gone as well, and Fury may very well be out of this game. It may be up to ANF only. Fury has been defeated. Our first kill of the game, Cryogeddon, Coming in once again on top of this Iron Curtain. Riptides are here to rip this base apart, and Tangus are here to defend. That barracks is still online. The oil derrick eventually got eliminated a while ago, and the, bar the power plant in the corner as well, keeping Uno you know, in this game. Those Tangus from Uno you know, have just been so unbelievably useful in defending everywhere on the map, even attacking a couple of different times. The numbers are wearing thin, but Yuno has been doing a phenomenal job of staying active with very, very few forces. Aircraft carriers once again getting pushed away. The Akula subs, the Twin Blades have been really good at defending for Chris. Chris taking this corner expansion, the lifeblood of his late game. Two fresh refineries, 30K each, and he has just scratched the surface. Meanwhile, almost out of cash, 5,000, nearly 6,000 between those two ore nodes for A and F. He is about to run out of steam, and if this block of aircraft carriers does not win the game, it's gonna be difficult for A and F to actually be able to rebuild an army. Chris and ANF are just both so spread out. Harvester's getting stuck here. One of them perhaps for a potential expansion. Also two refineries here, still 50,000 credits between the two of them. Airfield getting targeted down. ANF I don't think is even using that, so it's not a huge loss to, to take that down, but uh, always nice to kill another building. Aircraft carrier almost going down. Fully heroic aircraft carrier. Two fully heroic aircraft carriers and then a double vent aircraft carrier. There's sort of just too many Akula subs here. Shrink does happen, but no crushing out on the water. 
there actually might be enough hydrofoils as these aircraft carriers get shrunk down and reposition they're definitely not all active at the same time a couple of them almost getting frozen you know still running around with those tangus killing a couple of harvesters here or there iron curtain is ready chronosphere is ready two minutes on the proton collider as well one Akula sub gets frozen and deleted. The rest of them are going to try and make a run for it, go for that fully heroic aircraft carrier, chasing it away from the naval yard. He's going to get the kill as well. Chris cleans up another aircraft carrier. Two more remain. Chris has a fresh two expansions in the south, so his income is actually looking pretty healthy. Bullfrog's coming through. They can eliminate a couple of these drones, but it doesn't really help him win the game. Another Akula sub goes down. Chris may need to call this one quits. There's going to be actually the Iron Curtain. He does manage to grab one of those Akula subs, and he waits until after the Chronosphere gets used. Bullfrog's trying to chase down any remaining air units. Another Spectrum Tower goes down. Too many Hydrofoils targeting the same Akula sub, but now the Iron Curtain has expired, so he can shut down that Akula sub as well. A and F almost holding off these Akula subs just about forever, and just barely Chris manages to come through. Satellite's going to be getting dropped down. Could be the big one. Takes down the airfield, takes down the power plant as Chris desperately trying to break this allied player, you know, with so few units left, a couple of burst drones roaming around the map, and that's pretty much it for you know. Unfortunately for you know, there just isn't much left. Low power mode saving the Zikula subs, allowing them to eliminate another power plant. 35 seconds on that Proton Collider. There's gonna be the sell-off of some critical infrastructure for a and F to try and bring the power back online. A fresh power plant gets added into the mix and the aircraft carrier gets shrunk just to escape. A Soul Destroyer or uh, Akula subs going down. Chris's expansion in the south will be an ideal place for that Proton Collider to hit. But I don't actually know that a and F has vision of that. ANF does not have a vision of that base. It looks like he did see it at some point, so he will know that that is a spot to potentially hit with the Proton Collider. MiG's moving out. Proton Collider ready to go. Vacuum Imploder gets added on by Chris. Down in the south immediately into low power mode as well. Proton Collider could try and take down a super reactor. Try and reset Chris. Chris going for the rebuild on that refinery. Akula's up, still trying to push away these aircraft carriers. A and F unable to kill off Chris. Chris unable to kill off A and F. And with the naval yard so far away, it takes Chris a long time to get there, and that's going to be the Proton Collider called in, I think. But where is the uh, the juiciest target to try and use that Proton? Chronosphere ready as well. More and more Kula subs cycling around the north side of the map. And F calls it in. Forces the sell off of a couple of buildings, gets the airfield, gets a refinery. Second refinery does survive. Chris is going to have to rebuild his build radius a little bit there. His MCV is on the move. His crusher crane is still around up here, so he actually did manage to keep that crusher crane alive. But this expansion in the south has been so key, so critical for Chris. And now it is completely offline. No harvesters, only one refinery. He's about to get his harvester back online. He'll get that refinery, that other refinery, up and running soon enough. You know, just taking random buildings all around the map, trying to be as annoying as possible. And hey, do whatever you can. Chris moves out with twin blades. He's going to be able to catch a couple of these uh, IFVs. He's going to be able to shut down this entire expansion. Goes for the harvester first. 
going to be forcing the sell-off of the refineries as well. And that's, I mean, you might as well get as much cash back as you can if you're ANF. Does have a prospector in the south, can rebuild this expansion. Akula subs reforming their front line. They get a free kill on one of the hydrofoils. That's really good. It means the Bullfrogs, the MiGs, the Twin Blades, something can come in to help these Akula subs clear out these aircraft carriers. Fully heroic aircraft carrier is here. Chris is ready to go to war. There's going to be the Chronosphere activated to get the MCV back here. I'm not sure where he just whisked it away from, possibly down here, but he did save that MCV. Three minutes, 50 seconds ticking down for that vacuum imploder. Iron Curtain ready to go. Two more Akula subs joining the fray. Chris fires off ultra torpedoes all across the base, damaging multiple buildings, even his own to, uh, even his own Akula subs going to be absorbing one of those shots there. Twin Blades looking for fresh blood, looking for a fresh target over land. And really, the MiGs need to come over here to clean out these cryocopters. It's going to be... Uh, okay, there was a curious choice. He did manage to grab four of the Akula subs with that Iron Curtain, which should be enough to swing things into his favor. He's going to go for the kill on the seaport. I guess he really does need to shut down this command hub. I believe that's the tier three for this whole area. It's going to be low power mode soon enough for A and F as Chris comes through with his army of sharks chopping his way through the allied base. Satellites getting called in as well. It's going to be the last stand for a and F. It's basically just a base race at this point, but a and F has no hope of winning it. If he holds off these Akula subs, well, he's going to have more problems as these Twin Blades show up. His production has been completely taken offline. Cryocopters are sort of his only hope, but of course they don't shoot up. A MiG's showing up. They're going to be able to clear out the Cryocopters, and Chris is going to be coming through. No! The Black Hole Armor saving those Cryocopters for at least a couple of seconds. The GG gets called, and finally, finally... Chris comes through with the win. That was a crazy 2v2, really coming down to a 1v1 for like half of that. And Chris putting up a, an amazing fight there. Just really showing his ability to withstand so, so many attacks and to pivot time and time again in that particular game. Two v two is done. Somebody called it. We are going to be seeing a very particular map next. King Kong tuning in. Waff the wolf still hanging out. You know, joining the chat as well. Jug Cage says, here comes the cryo, there goes the cryo. Yeah, there were a lot of cryocopter deaths in that particular game. All right, boys and girls, game two coming up. This is going to be one for the ages. You've never seen a match quite like this. Welcome to Infinity Isle for a 1v1 as the Cyan allied player. This is Master X. And as the red empire on the right side, this is... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> GG! Hello! That was the best game ever. Oh my gosh. Do you guys want uh, Encore, right? <laughs> Encore. Oh my gosh. What an amazing game that was. The micro, the macro. Just, it was too much. I cannot believe how good that game was. All right. Welcome to Infinity Isle. As the Red Empire on the right side, this is Battle Soul. As the Cyan Allies on the left side, this is Master X. Master X versus Battle Soul. The fight for the ages, the game that we have all been looking for. Who can get the barracks down first? That is going to be the question. And of course, the first dog is out for Master X. 
What an amazing game. GG gets called, and that is going to be game. Wow. S even better the second time. That was truly an amazing game. I think... Um, I think someone sent me that game by accident. <laughs> I just love that someone sent in, like, a crash game. They're like, hey, this game where we crashed 10 seconds in, that's going to be a good one. You're really going to enjoy this. What an amazing... What an amazing game. I'm actually, I'm going to leave that one in. I'm not even going to cut that out of the VOD that goes up on YouTube. What an amazing match that was. Wow. That makes me feel really good about being able to finish these replays. Of course, we still have three Carville games coming up. So we're going to be, we're going to be, we're going to be here for a while. Good night, Amurg. VOD will be up, so, you know, check it on your convenience. Wow, I feel like after that, we have to cut the stream, right? Like, that was such an unmatchable game that we just have to cancel the stream after that. Like, how are you going to follow that up? Well, it's going to be impossible, but we are going to try anyways. Welcome to Cabana Republic for game number three of this subscriber replay showcase. On the left side playing as the Yellow Allies, this is Por Favor. And on the right side as the Purple Soviets of Cabana Republic, this is Dom Glitch Step. Last time we saw Cabana Republic, the game got absolutely insane. I don't think the same thing is going to happen here. Uh, at the very least, we don't have the same kind of air field all in that we had in that game. So regardless of what happens for the rest of this match, things are looking a little normal. Great roar there by Glitch Step. He gets the kill. Uh, I will be honest, getting the right roar off is a little bit luck. Uh, depending on the game, depending on the connections between between the players, the lag can definitely play the factor. Like, it's such a slim margin as far as who gets the roar off. I would love to see a couple of good Red Alert 3 players in LAN so that we don't have to deal with the server. That would be absolutely phenomenal to see. War Factory going to be coming up. It is a double reactor play into the War Factory. So he keeps the barracks around. He doesn't sell the barracks off. No oil derrick just yet for either player. I do think Por Favor is getting close with his engineer. What the heck are these guys doing? What's going on? The engineer get clobbered by that bear. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did Por Favor lose his engineer? Well, try, try again. Engineer comes out for Glitch Step. Is he going Bullfrog to transport the engineer? Uh-oh. I don't know what these guys are doing anymore. That last game was so good, it just it threw me off. I couldn't believe it. When I do the chapter markers on YouTube, it's going to be like, uh, you know, 21 minutes, 14 seconds, game number two. 21 minutes, 15 seconds, game number three. It's going to be like a one-second difference between game one and game two. What are these guys doing? They're going to get their engineers over there. All right, Dom Glitch Step. No super reactor for ex before expansion. I was expecting him to go super before the expansion. All right, airfield is up. Third refinery is going to be taken. Are they both going to be taking the close by C expansions? Ooh, these two guys are going to be very close quarters. Cabana Republic is one of those maps that can definitely turn into a meat grinder. If you play the southern half of the map, then what ends up happening is that units follow this land route to your opponent's base, and this is sort of the route of least resistance. Meanwhile, if you think of Fire Island, the three lanes on Fire Island are pretty similar to each other. Yeah, the outside ones are a little further, but they're pretty similar to each other. But Cabana Republic, so many battles have been fought in this strip of land south of the resort and in between these two plateaus. Just infinite armies get expended 
there, just clashing again and again and again. Dog and Bear go down, Refinery is up. Third Refinery almost online for Glitch Step. So a very calm, a very uh, normal opening from both of these guys. Maybe a little bit slow. Nice jump on the sickle. So they've learned a couple of tricks. I uh, Actually, I don't know if he actually dodged all of those bombs. He might have caught some of the bombs. But uh, Second Sickle does take a couple of more bombs. Uh, Javelin Soldier getting shut down. That would be a nice kill. I mean, these Sickles may not get too much more accomplished with the Vindicators just right on top of them. So killing a couple of Javelin Soldiers might be sort of the best thing you could hope for. Nope. He doesn't get it, unfortunately. Dom Glitch Step getting very little value for those Sickles. And I mean, hey, against a guy with two Vindicators, it's, it's hard to get value with two Sickles against a guy with two Vindicators. Still just Tier 1 for Por Favor. Super Reactor coming up. Almost halfway done. Four Bullfrogs are out. Uh, another Sickle heading out. I'm not sure what he hopes to accomplish with this Sickle. Ooh, nicely timed there. You go for the kill on the Ore Collector, but you got the timing for the splash damage on the Refinery as well. And Glitch Step is, uh, is honestly just kind of getting torn apart here. It looks like that dolphin killed the terror drone and the terror drone killed the dolphin. So it was another one of those little lag moments sometimes. There's a bit of lag there and you'll have something like that happen where an interaction that really shouldn't have happened does happen. And uh, hey, well, you know, sometimes that happens. Super Actor is here online. Got a couple of hammer tanks. Terror drone is getting added into the mix as well. Tier 2 on the Naval Yard, so we could be seeing some Assault Destroyers from this point forward. Nothing else from the Soviet player is actually out on the water, so third refinery shutdown is great. Por favor could actually just combo this into a base push, drop a refinery here if he wants to be really, uh, if he really wants to stick it to his opponent, and then just go for a turret push in the south and just hang out on the water, and, uh, you know, the dolphins are sort of your strength. Sickle on the high ground. Dom glitch step moving out big time. Hammer tanks through the middle of the map. No fourth refinery just yet from Por Favor. He's going to be happy to exist on his three refineries for the current moment. He's building up a uh, pretty decent navy. He's got a good number of dolphins, adding on hydrofoils and assault destroyers. Terror drone in the north. Long Dom Glitch Step actually drops a crusher crane in the middle of the map. A really curious choice, but it is someplace that he can go for repairs quite easily. Oh no, this MCV is on a very aggressive path. Where are you going, Dom? Okay, this naval expansion may be the most important part of the game for Por Favor. He's saying, please, please don't just kill me in this game. Hammer tanks coming in. Vindicators are not nearby to defend. And actually, they're going to have to refuel before they go for a kill. Hammer tanks are close enough that the Vindicators can get them quite quickly. More and more Javelin soldiers going down. A couple of Hammer tanks going down. Bullfrogs do not get a single kill, but it's going to be a base push is what this is turning into from Glitch Step. It's going to be the Tesla coil as well as a double barracks. That crusher crane being utilized here. And the bear going for a kill. He gets a javelin soldier. The bear gets a roar as well. And so, oh, he goes for the MCV. He doesn't shut down the Tesla coil. So the Tesla coil is going to finish. One Tesla coil and it's going to finish. He can't bomb it out of existence now. If you get the double bombs off while it's building, you might be able to get the finishing shots. Uh, as it, but no, it's going to be a sell off of an airfield. He is rebuilding his entire base in the middle of the map, and suddenly Dom Glitch Step with a Tesla push is going to be taking over his opponent's base. The barracks does still remain, so if he got out some peacekeepers or something, he might be able to get a couple of kills, but he's not going to take down that Tesla coil, so he's not going to stop this assault. His only hope is to try and trade out and kill some of his opponent's units. No expansion in the north. Oh, if one of these was a command post, that would be amazing for Por Favor. 
He's got that tier two, so he is getting an all right spot technology wise, but his production is going to suck after this. Refinery goes down, Barracks gets eliminated, and Dom Glitchstep can now expand to his opponent's main base. It is going to be four refineries, possibly versus two refineries if he's almost got that refinery ready to go, which he does not. Oil Derek hasn't been captured, would be a good catch for Dom Glitchstep just to take that away from his opponent and just make sure that he's got that extra bit of advantage. Having that Oil Derek and denying it from your opponent, it doesn't matter much at first, but as the game goes on, it becomes nicer and nicer to have. Also, getting this hospital may actually be worth it considering the amount of infantry he built. If he wants to try and take these buildings and hold them, it may end up being beneficial. We'll see what Dom goes for. He's got his one refinery up and running, so he's got three refineries, two, one, and he moves on immediately. He doesn't drop a reactor to go for the base creep, so uh, he's not going to be getting any advantage of having that MCV already there. He's just going to have to expand out to a fourth refinery the slow way if he indeed wants to do that. No! No, poor Favor, he doesn't realize his, his engineer, engineer what? His harvester gets uh, gets sent to the side. Oh no, poor, poor Favor. Dom Glitchstep is like, yeah, this guy, he's got two refineries, but I'm gonna knock him down. It's like, no, he doesn't even have two refineries. He's basically just got one refinery. Aircraft carrier gets the EMP. He goes tier three. And Glitch Step is going to have to retreat from the front line. Assault Destroyer is here. MCV taking damage. But the aircraft, the Assault Destroyer goes down. The aircraft carrier trying to target down this MCV. The Crusher Crane is still there. No reinforcements coming in from the main base. No, two hammer tanks are going to be here. But nothing that can get out onto the water. No twin blades, nothing like that. Ter uh, Tesla Coil does get eliminated. The MCV trying to escape away to where it can get free repairs, possibly even an engineer getting produced. Three terror drones in the south. They could go for an infect, but it's so close. This is just going to delay that air car aircraft carrier from being able to do any more damage. It's not going to stop the assault. Aircraft carrier pulls back a little bit there, slows down this attack. Hammer tank does go down. No airfield. That's a big mistake from Dom Glitchstep. He is he needs an airfield, he needs a naval yard, something to be able to contend with this allied player. Could go for the infect on this harvester, but honestly, not calling attention to that harvester is probably the better thing to do. You just want your opponent to not ever notice that they don't have that uh, that harvester working. MCV is going to escape away to the high ground, to the uh, north, excuse me, not even the high ground, out to the water. Walls one by one getting cleaned up. Riptide going to shut down this barracks, and Dom Glitchstep is going to get pushed completely back. Poor Favor may not have much, but he's got a tier three allied naval yard, and that is pretty much all he needs. Refinery does go up. Glitch Step is going to be happy to see that. He's like, ooh, well, now I can Tesla push you. Okay, now is the time to infect that harvester with a terror drone. Now that it's actually working and doing something. Tesla coil gets dropped down. And, uh, well, Port War is going to have to do something if he wants to save that expansion. He can't just let that, tes that Tesla coil get established. He does have a multi-gunner turret, so that is good. He can start working away at that Tesla coil, buy enough time for the Dolphins to get up to the north. We'll see if they get there in time or if this uh, multi-gunner turret is already expired by the time they get there. A second multi-gunner turret as the Dolphins come in, though, could be enough to knock down this Tesla coil. There's going to be the kill of the multi-gunner. And, uh, well, all right, first Dolphin comes in. Oh, no, he's going for the command hub. Oh, well, that sucks. These dolphins may actually get the kill on that testicle. And now he gets both dolphins independently. They don't come in at the same time. The second refinery is going to get established, and there's the multi-gunner turret to help shut down this Tesla coil. Goodbye, but a little bit of cash back there from Glitch Step. And poor Favor moves on. He's now going to be breaking into the main base of... Oh, wait, why aren't you attacking the walls? It's a weird thing to attack with your aircraft carrier. 
Cryoblast, not enough, and he doesn't actually get the power plant either. A bit unfortunate of a freeze there from Porfavor. He gets the kill on one of the Harvesters, but he doesn't move on to immediately attack the refinery, which is a bit of a mistake. Terradrone does get the infect there, and this aircraft carrier is going to have to head back home if he wants to survive. No dolphins nearby. If he had a dolphin, he could splash damage kill that terror drone, but none of them are nearby. There is one that could potentially close in and go over there to kill off that terror drone. Uh, this aircraft carrier, is he just going to go down? He just doesn't care? I guess he's going to try and go for the kill on the super reactor, but at this point, it uh, kind of doesn't matter. Why don't you just send it home, man? Send it home. Let him live. But satellites are going to get called down. The aircraft carrier going for the other refinery on the other side. And the aircraft carrier goes down. The drones get eliminated. Por favor has pulled off the expansion to the north. He is now sitting on four refineries to the four refineries of the Soviet player. One oil derrick each, and somehow it has come out completely even in the economy. Of course, the actual number of working refineries is a little bit lower as of recently for Glitch Step. And also Glitch Step isn't tier three, so a bit of a unfortunate setup here for Glitch Step. Por favor has worked himself into a pretty solid position overall. It feels like Porfavor has uh, a lot of options. Now that he's got those extra refineries, he can drop an additional airfield to get out a bunch more Vindicators or a couple of Apollos. He can go for, uh, you know, more Cryocopters as well, potentially. Getting another aircraft carrier is nice, you know, having two aircraft carriers instead of one, but he may need Hydrofoils and other stuff to support that aircraft carrier as well. Aircraft carrier going for the kill on the refinery. Hammer tanks going down on the right side of the map. And what is glitch step? Okay, finally got an airfield. Finally, we got the airfield up and running. We're looking good uh, to have some options to actually fight Porfavor because glitch step has just been running away from Porfavor for most of this game. Refinery is going to get sold off. Glitch Step loses his economic edge that he had for a while. Why do you... Why are you killing so many walls? Stop killing the walls, man. Just don't kill the walls. Terror Drone is going to try and jump on that aircraft carrier. He does go for the stasis. He is going to be able to lock down that aircraft carrier for a moment. And these hammer tanks going to be forcing that aircraft carrier a little bit further away. Two more Terror Drones going to be coming out. Glitch Step bringing as much pain as he can. The aircraft carrier, or the Assault Destroyer, something goes down to the Terror Drone before the Terror Drone eventually gets eliminated. Riptide's getting locked in their spot. And is he going to switch them over just to kill off the drones? That might be the perfect move here. Yeah, perfectly done there. That's a great move. Locking down both of the Riptides and then use your other Terror Drone just to get the... Oh, Cryo Blast to try and scare away the Terror Drone. He misses the Terror Drone. He's going to Cryo Blast his own aircraft carrier just on the edge there. Not enough to actually freeze it down. And the micro does fall apart for Dom Glitch Step, so he does let one round of drones get some shots off there. Vindicators coming in. They do bomb split. Nicely done there. Enough to get these Riptides back online, but not enough to save that aircraft carrier. Goodbye, aircraft carrier. Another one down in the depths. Por favor. He's got a good amount of economy, but he doesn't have a good amount of army anymore. He used to have a decent, you know, two aircraft carriers is pretty good as far as eliminating the relatively small amount of stuff that Glitch Step has, but uh, those aircraft carriers not quite as active as they once were. Three, four twin blades are out. A fifth one gets added in. Two and a half minutes on the clock for the chronosphere. Vindicators are here. Ooh. Fresh Proton Collider. Why, why are you not letting me select that? Uh, fresh Proton Collider gets added in. This is a full-featured allied base. He's really only mixing, missing the War Factory. And honestly, he might be able to uh, utilize that pretty soon. 
He did go tier three on his MCV, so if he repositions that MCV, that may cut off his production of aircraft carriers, depending on where he moves to. If he tries to retake his original main base, he may sort of lose his tier three production elsewhere. Twin Blades going to be able to get the jump on this expansion in the north. Finally, Glitch Step is going to be able to actually do something active on the map. And uh, nicely done there. Four for four reestablishes his build radius. So he is going to be able to maintain some kind of control in the north. Aircraft Carrier is almost done clearing out the main base. Aircraft Carrier on the right side has not cleaned up this super reactor just yet hydrofoil gets infected and he really wants to kill that super reactor but he just has not been able to more terror drones showing up he gets the stasis once again that those these aircraft carrier drones that is a bad time to be an aircraft carrier drone uh, that's a terrible spot for a uh, multi-gunner turret if you ever want to use that refinery all right, the super reactor is finally down to half health. Another impact on this aircraft carrier. But finally, there's no terror drones to stasis the aircraft carrier and cause it to die. Cause the, cause the drones to die. Are you kidding me? He gets it again! Oh, this super reactor just will not die. And these two players might be locked in some kind of an infinite fight. Just trapped on Cabana Republic for the... for all time. Twin Blades coming in. They're going to be able to get the kill on that... Uh, on that aircraft carrier. They're not going to be able to fight this many hydrofoils, though. Chronosphere is ready. Could potentially grab, but I don't even know what he wants to grab. He's gonna go for the cryo get in on the on the refinery. Riptides are ready. Should be able to blast through everything if he's quick enough. Get the kill on the refinery. Okay, there he goes. He gets the kill on the refinery. Terror drone does not get the infect. Hammer tank going to be pushing this away. Power plant goes down. Barracks could be next. This is the original barracks from the first minute of the game. And just before it thaws, it does get taken down. Barracks, or Battle Lab is getting rebuilt, or is getting built in the north. Twin Blades controlling the middle of the map. Chronosphere, I think, taking out a couple of tanks or something. They're out to the water. Ooh, this is your chance! This is your time! Start attacking that Super X. It's going to take you forever to kill it with, with Riptides, but... You have a chance. No, oh, the hammer tanks are going to push him away. Oh, it's too much. Two and a half minutes just under for that, for that proton collider. Nice use of the hydrofoils. All right. You got to respect it. Hydrofoils eliminating tank guns is, uh, is always pretty useful. Just the fight of the blue beams right here between the hydrofoils and the hammer tanks. Three aircraft carriers from Por Favor. Rebuilt half of this expansion. He's got slow going on this harvester, but it is a very safe harvester. Only adds a couple of seconds to each trip. And there we go. The super reactor does go down. One hammer tank gets eliminated as well. And these aircraft carriers can now clear out the rest of Glitch Step's main base. Glitchstep sells off his uh, his buildings over here on the left side. A couple of bears going to be sneaking through. One and a half minutes on the Proton Collider. It is going to be ready to go very soon, and there is not going to be many targets left for it to hit. War Factory is probably going to be the next target of these aircraft carriers, and it looks like Por Favor is going to be able to clinch it. He can just keep his aircraft carriers moving, finding more and more targets. Satellites get called in on the power plants. Eliminates a whole bunch of power plants, and actually that's going to be low power mode. One minute and 11 seconds, only three hydrofoils here. This is actually enough for the Twin Blades to jump on and get the kill, and this is now a Tier 1 seaport. So goodbye, MCV. More hydrofoils coming in. 
three more of them going to be able to fight off these twin blades four five six of them and they are going to be able to shut down some of these twin blade weapons the mcb it's the fight for the kill and barely it no it goes down the twin blade as it catches the last bit of health of that mcb i cannot believe it he gets the kill and now he has to rebuild his mcb low power mode selling off all of his multi-gunner turrets sell off these guys in the north yeah sell off this guy in the middle of that path and okay he's back online what a killer play there from glitch step buys himself another minute or so completely resets the tech of this allied player oh and he gets the infect on all three aircraft carriers gets the infect gets the infect on all three aircraft carriers war factory survives that bombing run there we go he's gonna go for the micro he's just gonna try and micro all three of these aircraft carriers with the stasis he's gonna get the kill on every single aircraft carrier drone and stop them uh, that was that was a beautiful attempt that was a magnificent attempt Kirov is out airfield does go down war factory will be eliminated next where war factory war factory no oh my gosh that at war factory he forgot about it he was so worried about killing the other stuff that he's pulled back all of the aircraft carriers he literally needed like one more drone to drop a bomb oh my gosh that terror drone gets the kill this terror drone is gonna get a kill as well proton collider is ready to go where is he gonna hit super reactor in the mcv he can take down the super reactor at least heroic aircraft carrier about to be eliminated kirov closing in on the allied base proton collider ready to go riptide's gonna get the kill nicely done and it was on the tier three he shuts down the tier three so no more kirovs nothing like that as this kirov is like well i don't want to go over there when there's this many hydrofoils mcb is back up and running tier two i don't know what he's built but it's not tier two maybe adding on another refinery up north or something i can't believe he still hasn't sold off that multi-gunner turret oh my gosh dom glitch step almost pulling it back what an amazing attempt by him He's still in a pretty bad spot, but the fact that uh, Por Favor never re-expanded to the land, so there's no Athena cannons, there's no, uh, oh, crowd I'm gonna catch this naval yard, reset it, but the MiGs are here. They're gonna get every single Vindicator moments before the cryo get, and I thought should have frozen that naval yard, but it doesn't matter. The Vindicators all went down anyways. The MiGs able to catch them. Naval Yard survives. Could be some Akula subs on their way relatively soon. Did he ever rebuild that super reactor? Oh my gosh, he didn't. Dom glitch step, never rebuilding. Oh no, it's right there. That's right. It's been around for a while. I was like, that's crazy. He never rebuilt his is super reactor but of course he did akula subs are out oh poor favor should have built a war factory at some point in the past even getting a couple of naval yards akula sub gets eaten up kills an akula sub just to uh save his to save his uh airfield for the current moment buy him some extra time Another Akula sub about to finish. Two Dolphins are here. Ooh, almost gets his own Dolphins with that Precision Bomber. And the Akula sub is going to be fighting way too many units at once, so that Akula sub will go down. Takes down a couple of Riptides, so the next Akula sub might be able to kill a couple of more Riptides, and then by that time, the Naval Yard will be eliminated. And actually, one more Akula sub may not even pop out. Barely no! The Naval Yard does go down, but it's gonna take Por Favor so long to kill anything on land. Kirov gets taken down. Unfortunate there, just way too many Hydrofoils. Way, way too many Hydrofoils. I guess maybe he could have sent the Kirov north 
killed off the killed off the oil derrick and then gone up here and at the very least he would have gone for one of the production facilities could have killed that off sell off of the refinery there's the sell off of the mcv barracks should be next and he is just building more infantry units okay there we go glitch step takes the l there as finally por favor gets the win a long and weird game there on cabana republic uh, some fun and some silliness there as these guys were much closer in economy than I thought I do not know how Dom glitch step was that close in economy. Well, I guess there was that He had four uh, three refineries for a moment, but then uh, that that harvester never got online Well, it took several minutes for that harvester to get online Which definitely did help All right, we are into the Carville game, so ready yourself for the 2v2v2 action. Hopefully there are no repeats like there was in the last video. Off the wolf saying he used to have 10 APM when he started playing Red Alert 3. And yet, he was able to become one of the greatest that the game has ever seen. Or one of the mediumest that the game has ever seen. Nah, he really was. A great player back in the day, now he is a great rusty player. Ten APM to the top of the heap. What a story there for Waff the Wolf. Are you ready? Have you prepared your body, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your financial situation? Have you prepared your will? You may die watching this video watching these next couple of replays and what a way to go there's no better way than watching 2v2v2s on carville and i think we have three of them in a row to finish out this subscriber replay showcase on the top right hand corner as the purple allies this is jack no and you might be able to tell his ally as the yellow allies maybe here yes here this is 3738 one nine meanwhile in the south playing as the cyan this is tico wolf their ally as the blue in the corner this is quesadilla is it actually quesadilla no it's quasada but quesadilla is way more fun to say the bridges have already been broken crates are appearing which means it is goofy times as in the middle trapped and surrounded this is Fanzi, their teammate as the green, also playing allies. This is Mystique. Mystique and Fanzi trapped in the middle of the map. They are going to be perhaps surrounded and destroyed by their opponents. Although sometimes the guys on the outer edge fight each other and the guys in the middle can like escape up to the top left corner. But it looks like Quesadilla is already on the move there, already sending some dogs, sending some scouts. However, Numbers and Jackno are indeed fighting for the southern, southern superiority down there. Wait a second. Okay, Air, allies, 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 allies. So two double allies teams and then one allies Soviet team. So Tico Wolf, the only non-allied player in the game quesadilla also an allied player and well for the current moment these peacekeepers will get taken down by these what <laughs> what was that he was just flying outside of the building he's just levitating just dom glitch stepping his way out of the second story vindicators coming across 
How is this game going to shape up? You know, sometimes these 2v2v2s, they can take very different uh, directions. Oh, man. That's four javelin soldiers down the drain. 1,200 buckaroos in the beginning of the game. That sets you back almost a full refinery. Expansion's coming up. Although, wow, this is actually two veterancy crates. I mean, you don't have anything really worth using the veterancy crate on right now. But two veterancy crates. There was a cash crate nearby, so that was $1,000 into Fanzi's pocket. Uh, whatever was building there got cleaned up. Command hub is there. Multi-gunner turret gets established. Mystique going to be expanding down to the water, potentially up into the corner as well. Jackno is taking the top side. Meanwhile, Quesadilla is taking the left side. So this top left corner is going to be fought over by blue and by purple. And uh, that might actually work out very nicely for Mystique and Fanzi. Basically, if you do the double team in the middle, the only way that you really survive is if the guys on the outside spend more time fighting each other, whereas what often happens is the guys on the outside just basically double team the team in the inside. And, uh, you know, it ends up just tearing the team on the inside apart. But this is actually a decent setup. There is an opportunity for, uh, for Mystique to just let Quesadilla and Jackno fight it out in the top left-hand corner of the map. Quesadilla, or Mystique is like, no, I want to fight it out. And well, hey, if that's what you're going to do, then have fun with your two 1v2s. Fanzi went down onto the water, tried to take that water expansion, but uh, Numbers is not going to be letting that happen. Nail Yard is here. Two, tier 2 is up for Numbers. Meanwhile, Jackno sitting at that tier one. He's got his war factory out and running. He's trying to get that expansion up and running in the top left. He may even drop an additional production facility over there. Jackno has Mystique to thank, although he does not know it. He's like, who's that mysterious one who is keeping me safe from even though they're on a different team? Hydrofoil comes out. A couple of Vindicators going to be able to clean up both of those multi-gunner turrets. Nicely done by Fanzi. And Mystique gets a magnificent roar off. Going to be able to kill a ton of Javelin Soldiers. And, I mean, Javelin Soldiers, they are kind of cheap. But they're not cheap, ultimately, at the end of the day. This many Javelin Soldiers is a lot of cash down the drain for Quesadilla. He does have four refineries, so he can afford it. But... That is just money down the drain that you would much rather be spending somewhere else. Naval Yard about to go down. Jackno gets his own Naval Yard up and running, but it may not be very long lived as this Javelin Soldier trying to kill off those Riptides gets one Riptide before he gets eliminated. And the Riptide is going to be able to target down this Naval Yard. The multi gunner truck comes out of the freeze just in time as the Dolphin shows up to break apart that ooh. Well, that's the shutdown of the attack. Barely the seaport does survive. Multi-gunner turrets getting established there on the right side. Airfield is up, and hey now, this is what we are here for. This is why we watch these games. Kirovs and other cool stuff that you don't necessarily get to see in a 1v1. Naval Yard goes down. Riptides taking it down while the multi-gunner turrets kill each other. Mystique with the consistent Vindicator bombing runs and actually the barracks on the land as well. Another expansion taken by Mystique. Two expansions out on the water. So bringing the total number of refineries for Mystique up to five. Meanwhile, it's about to be, I think, six, uh, five refineries up for Fanzi. If he takes the second one out on the water. Mystique and Fanzi with a pretty good setup, but we've seen this before. Athena Cannon gets locked down by that, uh, by the freeze. What is there actually, what is there actually to kill off that Athena Cannon though? Dog comes up, Aegis Shield does pop just in time. Nicely done there by Quesadilla. 
and just barely the Athena kind of comes back online. The freeze expires, and this refinery is maybe going to be going down. No, the infantry will just have enough firepower to push that Athena cannon back. Another Aegis shield does save the Athena cannon for the current moment, and the infantry trying to power through barely. The first Athena goes down, the Assault Destroyer is here, and the Multi-Gunner Turret goes down. No Black Hole armor, no survival for that aircraft, for that Assault Destroyer. Freeze almost locks down two Riptides. Dolphin gets the kill on both Riptides anyways, and Phazy getting targeted by everyone in the south. Jack No and Numbers both starting to push away Fanzy. And now between the Athena cannons and the multi-gunner turrets, this is going to be difficult to hold on to this water expansion. Mystique manages to get up an aircraft carrier, so at least he has that going for him. Kirovs make their way to land as Tico Wolf looking to blow up everything in the middle of the map. He actually does pause for a moment there. That's very bad. These Apollos need every second that they can get to potentially take down these Kirovs and stop them from doing maximum damage, but there just isn't enough bullets in their guns. Going for the airfield would actually be a really good move to stop those Apollos from refueling as the Kirovs tearing apart Mystique's base. Mystique is going to be losing the airfield as well, going to be forcing those Apollos to refuel somewhere else while this Kirov just heads off to another target. Fanzy getting blasted apart. The Dolphins don't get the kill on Fanzy's MCV, but this is just buying so much time for Jack No Numbers, Tico Wolf, and Quesadilla. They're going to have to fight each other eventually, but if they can both take a little bit of a breather as they clear out the middle of the map, then that is going to be good for them. The Kirov does go down. The second Kirov will get another kill, gets another refinery goes for the MCV. He's smelling blood in the water. Two Apollos show up. The Kirov freezes for a moment as the MCV packs up and runs for the hills. And the consolation prize will be that multi-gunner turret. The Apollos will get the kill. Mystique with the Apollo reinforcements able to clean up that Kirov. Two Apollos, not enough. Four Apollos, definitely enough. Tico Wolf still trying to hold on to the southern corner of the map. It's going to be contended by Numbers and Jack No. Mystique has uh, managed to hold on to a decent amount of stuff. Quesadilla. Okay, Javelin Soldiers inside of those Riptides, but a big Cryo Blast right on top of the army as the Cryo Blast going to be stopping this army from executing their attack orders as they intended. Peacekeeper gets a kill there. Return fire on the cryo shot as that multi-gunner turret gets sold off. Mystique has to sell off the refinery as well. Aircraft carriers still trying to clear out that left edge of the map. V4 goes down. V4 gets one rocket off before being eliminated. Another cryo shot going to be firing off. Catches pretty much all of the Javelin soldiers. And the multi-gunner turret will get a number of the kills there. Mass infantry coming in as Mystique clears out the corner of the map. Blasting uh, so much of this. Quesadilla has been defeated. The engineer going down there as it looks like Tico Wolf and Quesadilla might be the first team out of this game. Tico Wolf has a decent amount of stuff in the southern right edge of the map. And that is going to be what keeps him in the game for the next minute or so. The crane goes down. The reactor goes down. And it is going to be the middle of the map versus the top right corner. There's a war factory, there's an MCV, there's three refineries and an oil derrick in the south. A war factory and two power plants in the north. Tico Wolf has a decent setup, but a 1v2 is a difficult thing to do. A 1v2v2, even harder. But maybe Tico Wolf can kind of just hang out. No one attack Tico Wolf for like 20 minutes. And uh, Mystique is going to take the corner expansion. This is two refineries, 15K basically between the two of them, so 30K total. 
That's a decent amount of cash, and of course, even holding the depleted refineries will be worth it as the game drags on. Sentry gun getting added on. It's a ton of infantry headed your way. And Mystique is going to keep up the pressure. Aircraft carrier is going to try and clear out this other set of uh, buildings. Taking down the war factory will be nice. Although Tico Wolf probably should sell everything and just kind of refocus on one area of the map rather than just slowly losing this stuff to aircraft carriers and not selling any of it off and getting the cash back. Big freeze on the right side of the map as Jackno going to be losing a number of the hydrofoils, but not all of them, as uh, Sentry Bombers are terrible for taking out groups of units like that. And, well, goodbye Sentry Bomber. Vindicator's much better choice. Bomb splitting would have allowed more units to go down, but getting the, getting the hydrofoil that was actually awake was a good idea. Command Hub waiting, ready to drop a couple of additional refineries. Command Hub on the high ground, potentially. Conscript getting crushed there. And Mystique is just taking more and more territory. Fancy's MCV surviving kept him in the game and allowed him to rebuild some of those refineries that had gotten taken down. Command Hub is probably going to get shut down by these hammer tanks, but at least the War Factory will be eliminated by the aircraft carriers. So no more hammer tanks from the north. Actually, no, the Vindicators come through right at the last moment. They mostly clear out those hammer tanks, and it's going to be the power plant as the target after that. Multi-gunner turret, and the refinery does get established. So even if he loses that Command Hub, he can potentially rebuild it. And there's going to be the cash back getting called in. A little bit for the power plant, a little bit for the... Wow, a sentry bomber's coming through. It's a little bit of cash back for the power plant and for the hammer tank there. Sentry bomber's coming through, clearing out, I think, a barracks or a power plant and an airfield as well. Numbers going big into the air superiority with these sentry bombing runs. Cleans up the refinery. Mystique with an extra harvester there, potentially going for some kind of an expansion point. Fancy loses his own sentry bombers. As these Apollos find their mark, but get cleaned up as they try and go for the escape. That is a devastating toxin drop, as it looks like a huge clump of infantry has disappeared from Mystique's uh, armory. Conyard gets locked down. EMP could be step one to eliminating this MCV once and for all. Big cryo blast in the north, takes down the refinery, takes down the airfield as well. Sentry bombers going down, the refinery does survive. Sentry bombers turning south, four numbers going to be refueling back into the corner. And Tico Wolf has definitely decided to not attack Jack Noah and Numbers, which is good because he would get absolutely clobbered by them. And then this would turn into an actual 2v2 instead of a uh, almost just a 2v2. Mystique getting free opportunity to take essentially the entire left side of the map. Six expansions between the left side of the map. Lots of free area to draft additional infrastructure, power plants, tech, can hide the tech in the corner, can put additional production facilities down in the south, and a war factory or maybe a barracks getting added on would be nice. Tico Wolf loses another refinery. This refinery is still online, as is this one, and the Bullfrog's able to clean up some of these sentry bombers. Numbers gets the kill on another refinery of Mystique's. Double airfield worth of mostly sentry bombers. A couple of Apollos are there as well. And it looks like Jackno maybe has taken notice of Tico Wolf in the south. Tico Wolf's one chance of survival is not being noticed. Sentry bombers coming in. They're like, did we just kill off this refinery? And I mean, hey, if you make the sentry bombers waste their time killing off the same refinery again and again, then at the very least you can kill the sentry bombers, and uh, killing two sentry bombers is worth way more than a refinery. I think killing one sentry bomber is worth as much as a refinery. 
Aircraft carriers from Jackno going to be looking to target down some of uh, some of the stuff on the island, trying to clear out the buildings. Ooh, Tico Wolf kind of going on the on the offense here. Not sure that that's the best idea, but a couple of Athena cannons are coming to burn him down. He does have three hammer tanks. He might be able to close the distance. No super weapons. Ooh, Apollo's going to be able to get the kill on another sentry bomber. Once again, these sentry bombers as expensive as an expansion. So killing a refinery, but uh, losing a sentry bomber doesn't get you a whole lot of net gain. Athena cannons are going to get targeted down. They do kill a refinery, making it even more difficult for Tico Wolf to try and rebuild. He does have his third refinery back up on running, so he's still on two refineries overall, which is a good thing to have. And we have ourselves an Athena cannon hammer tank. Cryogeddon fires off, going to be forcing the split of these hammer tanks. One hammer tank does get frozen, but the Athena cannon hammer tank does burn down the Peacekeeper before that Athena Cannon can... Oh, actually, Hammer Tanks may go down, but no! The Athena Cannon Hammer Tank gets the kill on the real Hammer, on the real Athena Cannon. Sentry Bombers making continuous bombing runs for numbers. Meanwhile, Jackno with the aircraft carriers on the water, just clearing up more and more of Fancy's stuff. Athena Cannon goes down. Hammer tanks have been eliminated as Tico Wolf leaves the game. And now it is truly into a 2v2. These guys going to be going at it against each other. Couple of assault destroyers making their way through, but they're gonna get targeted immediately by Athena cannons. Decent amount of their health gets chunked down by the Athenas, and the Athenas get the finishing kill there. Not much accomplished there by Mystique. Oh, Engineer gets dropped. Fancy. Oh no, okay, never mind. Fancy expanding off of their allies' build radius there. Going to be able to take advantage of that build radius. EMP coming in, catches one Athena cannon, catches the other Athena cannon as well. Finally, this war factory will go down, goes for the kill on the barracks as well. The engineer escaping that, literally running towards the bombs as they're falling. Oh no. Oh dang. Can I? Oh, it's not working. I was gonna try and, uh, no. All right, I'm gonna give up. I was gonna try and live cut off the bottom two names on the scoreboard, but I'll just have to leave it. Mirage tanks coming in, Athena cannons coming in as well. Sentry bombers getting a lucky couple of bomb drops there as trying to clear out attacking forces with Athena, with a, uh, sentry bombers is a difficult thing to do at the best of times. And uh, well, it ends up working out there a little bit. More Mirage tanks in the north. The first super weapons have been built. Mystique taking, or Myst yeah, Mystique taking the edges of the map. So even if the middle of the map gets bombed out by aircraft carriers, Mystique still has at least something to survive on. Fancy definitely has taken the brunt of the damage from these sentry bombing runs and from the aircraft carriers. Cryogeddon ready to fire off. It's going to be able to catch this aircraft carrier, catch maybe the dolphins as well. But what is going to be utilized to actually get the kill here? Uh, I guess these Mirage tanks could try and close in. One Dolphin not actually going for the kill on the stuff that's frozen. And on top of that, the Dolphin goes heroic as Jackno defends himself. Mirage tanks don't shatter units. So if you're going to use Mirage tanks, you need a couple of shots to be able to get through that freeze. Dolphins finally do come in. Aircraft carrier goes down. Dolphins trading against Dolphins. And it's going to be the aircraft carrier that gets the kill on the Mirage tanks. Goes fully heroic as Jackno pushes further forward in the north. 
Numbers has lost an insane number of Sentry Bombers over the course of this game. One minute until the center, until the Chronosphere is ready. Four minutes until the Proton Collider is ready. Another refinery goes down. Jackno will not be stopped. He is just going all out. And, uh, well, Jackno going to be losing his own Sentry Bombers. No, one of them does survive. Mystique is going to be losing. Not a refinery. Actually, one Sentry Bomber isn't enough to kill a refinery. Maybe if a Sentry Bomber could drop all of its bombs at once. I've been really impressed by the team in the middle to survive this long. Jack No and Numbers have their work cut out for them to actually be able to kill off the team in the middle because of how this game has gone. Numbers getting ready to take two fresh expansions in the south. Sentry Bomber actually makes it back home. Dolphins coming in. Mystique going to go for another wave of attacks. And actually, Multigunner Turret gets established as well. So way too many Dolphins to be stopped by just a couple of Hydrofoils or a couple of Dolphins defending. And it's going to be an aircraft carrier getting taking the damage there. Uh, could potentially whisk it away to a safe place on the water. Aircraft carriers, not enough defense for them as these Dolphins from Mystique cut through the defending forces. And finally... Jackno sends enough dolphins to keep his extra aircraft carriers alive. One aircraft carrier does survive that engagement, and Mystique has an opportunity to rebuild once again. Chronosphere ready to go. Proton Collider, two minutes until that's ready to go. Vindicator's coming through. Another, uh, another giant... Uh, Cryogeddon firing off. Aircraft carrier gets locked down. Uh, what is... Uh, okay, dolphins are coming in. Dolphins coming in. Cryogeddon fires off as the defense. It's going to catch all of the dolphins. The jump! The hero jump! And he doesn't get it! Oh, the Vindicator's missing as well. What? An almost amazing play that was. The hero jump of that Dolphin. But the defense from Jackno is too good. The return fire of that Cryogeddon was perfect. It caught those Dolphins as they tried to close the distance. Aircraft carriers, they don't need to return to the airfield to refuel like sentry bombers, but this is a lot of sentry bombers moving in. Mystique is here, and he's going to go for the aircraft carriers. They both survive. No one does go down. Finally, the aircraft carrier gets eliminated, and uh, Fancy actually gets the kill on a sentry bomber as well as the second aircraft carrier going down. They trade it out for a refinery, but this is just an absolute slugfest between these four players. They're just going crazy with unit losses. They pretty much all got pretty good economy right from the beginning. Most of these guys have been on like four plus refineries for essentially the entire game. And the result is just big armies made of expensive units dying again and again and again and again. Refinery survives, but the aircraft carrier does not. Proton Collider is ready. That's not a tree. That tree doesn't have a real health bar. That is a Mirage tank. As Numbers is looking for the perfect target to unleash his... Uh, surely not. Is this a... What is this, a precision bomber? Oh! Oh! The Proton Collider gets taken out! I think that was. I think the Proton Collider, like, got eliminated before it could actually fire off. And no, suddenly, the surprise attack Mirage tanks get called in, trying to force a retreat from these Athena cannons as he calls in a bomb behind his opponent, but it kind of just backfires. He didn't have nearly enough firepower to stop this army. Mystique trying to come forward with the trick plays, but it just doesn't work. The Sentry Bombers get the kill on that 
Proton Collider, but it doesn't save the base in the south. And now Jack No and Numbers just feel a little too powerful. Aegis Shield pops, it saves most of the units inside of that radius, but no, most of the units are actually outside of the Aegis Shield. Mystique shows up and blasts apart the army. Everything goes down in the southern corner of the map. That south left corner just gets torn apart. Both sides lose basically everything there. Mystique's uh, Mirage tanks come through clutch at the last moment. Uh, Chrono Swap with an MCV sending something out to the water and goodbye as that, as that Peacekeeper floats into the water. Tanya doesn't get the kill on that MCV. Tanya gets knocked backwards and Tanya actually goes down as everything gets eliminated. Both teams just trading very inefficiently, all things considered, but in a very explosive way. Aegis Shield gets popped. Not enough to save those guys, but we'll see where the bombing runs actually land. It does save one of the IFVs. It does unfreeze just in time. Having this uh, Northern Expansion has been really helpful for Mystique and Fanzy because this area has not been attacked much at all. Free Trade has been purchased by probably at this point all of the allied players. So they get that extra bit of cash. Although no, Jack now maybe hasn't purchased Free Trade yet. Ah, which means he's at a, an economic disadvantage. Cleans up the entire squad. Ooh, cash right there, cash right there, pick up the cash. Unfortunately not. The money crate goes unclaimed, at least for the current moment. Fancy moving out. Fancy going to be able to thin out the herd. Aegis Shield does get popped. Vertigo Vindicator Bombs do get absorbed. And it's going to be Mirage Tank versus Mirage Tank, but Mystique can win that fight. And the Vertigo Bombers, oh, the Chronosphere fires off, but... Uh, oh, okay, they're out onto the water. Finally, it gets activated. It gets repositioned there at the last second. And these Mirage tanks go down, but one survives. Sentry bombers go for another kill. Tanya is here trying to run from that Mirage tank. If she could close the distance, she could get the, uh, get the catch there. Precision bomber goes for a big miss there. jumps into the sentry bomber the mcv getting targeted this is a double vet mirage tank about to go fully heroic a, the a massive amount of vindicators getting the kill on an mcv in the south meanwhile mass dolphins clear out the water and what even happened mystique and fancy suddenly coming through with a giant fight to win the game potentially here and this mirage tank will go down goes fully heroic as a second barrage shows up, but it's going to be heal against no healing. As this MCV is actually pretty low on health, is the micro going to be good enough pulling around to the other side? No! The chrono swap happens, and Jack No saves his MCV. He whisks it away down to the southern part of the map. And actually, that's where the Vindicators are going for another bombing run. It's been a long time since we've seen Vindicator numbers in this. You know, Vindicators in these kind of numbers. A couple of Vindicators going for a couple of last bombing runs, cleaning out a couple of these power plants. And Fancy with just mass, mass Vindicators with huge damage against some critical structures there. Numbers sacrifices one of his peacekeepers as he chrono swaps it with his allies MCV. Or I guess maybe uh, Jackno sacrifices his opponent or his allies uh, a, a peacekeeper there. Sentry Bomber getting targeted down. Tanya gets targeted down as well. No time belt will save you there. Vindicator's ready to go once again. Fancy moving out with his giant air force. Cryogeddon fires off, catches the airfield. These Apollos may have nowhere to land as two airfields go down. Power plants get eliminated. Engineers rushing to repair their allied MCV. Oh, 
bomb gets planted. Deluxe time bomb ready to go. Two power plants are about to be eliminated while Mystique cleans up the northern part of the map. Two power plants going bye-bye. Barracks gets established just in time. Sentry bombers clearing out the tier three, clearing out, I think, an airfield and a war factory as well. Chronosphere is ready to go once again. Mass Vindicator bombing run heading up to the north. Not a lot of targets do remain, but enough power plants to draw attention, I guess. Vindicators are going to help these Mirage tanks just clear this area out even more quickly. Ah, it's a heroic Mirage tank. Why are these Vindicators bombing a tree is what I almost asked. But of course, they take down that fully heroic Mirage tank from earlier. Mystique and Fanzi have just been on the absolute warpath, attack after attack after attack, as these Mirage tanks do not get chronosphered into oblivion. Well, never mind. I spoke a little bit too soon as they uh, get chronosphered into oblivion down in the south. The bomb clears out more javelin soldiers. And there's a couple of sneaky trees down in the south here. Mystique does have a, uh, a harvester that is offline, unfortunately. Two Mirage tanks going to be able to get the kill on this expansion in the corner once again. And Fanzi, Fanzi got almost killed, completely knocked out of this game. But this Vindicator, like, I don't know, eight Vindicator comeback that he managed to pull off. I think he even had 12 Vindicators earlier. Cryogeddon fires off. It misses both of those Mirage tanks. It's going to be up to this time bomb to get the actual kill. The Mirage tanks not going to be drawn into the trap. And the super deluxe time bomb is here. Supreme time bomb. As the Mirage tanks get chrono rifted, the chrono swap not going to be affecting them, but the Vindicator bombs actually get caught by the chrono rift as well. Supreme Time Bomb explodes, no real damage done. Mass Sentry Bomber cleaning up two refineries, but not the command hub. These ore mines in the north, perhaps the only ore mines with a significant amount of ore. That one literally untouched. That one is too sort of dangerous to really be taken by anyone. Too exposed for most of the game, but actually now it's relatively safe. Numbers and Jackno, they have not had a significant offense in some, some time. Well, Krowgenon is nice. Does manage to get the kill on, uh, get the freeze on a couple of Athena cannons. Not really any significant freeze, though, as there isn't anything there to kill them. A couple of Apollos. A couple of Apollos doing nothing. <laughs> okay, well, never mind. The Apollos are actually just going to watch those units unfreeze. And that's always, a, that's always the second part. You can freeze something, but if you don't have anything around to kill it, what does it matter? Sentry bombers clear out the refinery, but it is a sacrifice for the sentry bombers as Mystique and Fanzi are maybe going to be able to take this game despite being the team in the middle who normally just gets double teamed and eliminated. They have come from the middle and they have come for greatness. Jack no and numbers. I'm not sure where it went wrong for them. What an interesting shape that is being drawn with these walls. Curious uh, choice of wall placement there. I bet no one will figure out what kind of uh, diagram that is. No one will be clever enough to figure it out as Fancy gets some ground units and actually manages to do some damage. Well done to Fanzi for being able to step out. And once again, the Chronosphere eliminates a big chunk of Mirage tanks somewhere, maybe down here. I'm not sure where he sent them. Doesn't stop the Athena cannons. Another Chrono Swap happens as this Mirage tank shows up and just gets absolutely obliterated. Bye-bye. Oh, that was kind of interesting. You could see the outline. You actually still can see the outline of the Javelin Soldier. That's kind of interesting. I wonder why that, uh, how long that stays around. What is it in the game logic that causes that little figure and the shadow to stick around after a chrono swap happens? <laughs> chrono swaps Athena cannons with themselves just to break the attack of that 
uh, to break the attack of that javelin soldier. Okay, wow, this is this is not something that I've ever seen before. That's that's way that looks way different. Javelin soldiers assaulting these Athena cannons. Sentry bombers coming in as well. They completely miss, but that uh that bomb really shattering some things of this team in the south. I think a lot of these guys having fun, playing with their friends, having a good time. There we go. The GG gets called, and Mystique and uh, Fancy able to take the win there. Not much more to say about that one. We have made it through the first of our Cartville games, and it was okay. I think that's my official review of that. It was not a particularly high skill or interesting game, but... It did have a decent amount of action. There was a good spread of action all throughout. You know, it didn't really drag at any point. There was always something going on. And, you know, it's nice when games are able to keep happening. You know, they don't just slow down. Because some of those 2v2v2s, they do literally come to, like, a complete halt as players just hang out for a while. I don't know. There definitely are some tournaments that I need to catch up on, Verdome. Uh, I don't know when I will. It's just uh, easier to get some get some email replays and go through those. What's up, Goku? Catching the stream live. All right, let's just jump back into it for game number five here on Carvel. And uh, look at this guy. He is already planning to leave the island as as the green yeah, playing the Soviets. This is Xena. We're doing the introductions a little bit weird for this one because I was so amused by the, by the wall placements already. Their teammate as the Cyan. This is Blue Claire. Uh, let's move into the corner now as the uh, yellow Soviets. This is Cardinal. Would it be better if he was red? Yes, absolutely. But he is yellow, so what are you going to do? As the blue allies teaming up with Cardinal, this is Egyptian Rusher. And that means our team on the right edge of the map playing as the orange Soviets. This is Toxic Commander. He can tox and drop, and he's a Toxic Commander. Which means the fifth player, this purple Soviets in the north, this is Basile. So that is the layout of players. That's weird. Well. Uh. Ha. Huh. Okay. There's just, uh, there's no nameplate for this one. Why? I don't know. It's, uh, that's very curious. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, that's the next game. Yep. All right. So I don't know what's going on there. OBS just freaking out a little bit there. We will ignore it. Sorry, there will be no UI. I guess I can add that into the YouTube VOD, but uh, there will be no UI for you guys watching the stream. But what are you going to do? MCV from Xena moves down to the water, immediately disrupting Toxic Commander. It looks like Blue Chair, Blue Flare, excuse me, and Xena going to be joining forces to try and disrupt Toxic Commander and send him into a different part of the map. Wait, is this? I think this is five Soviets, like one allies. Yeah, five Soviets, one allies in this. So the last game was like five allied players, one Soviet, and this is five Soviets, one allies. Literally the reverse of that last replay. Sentry gun gets established. Going to try and cut down some of these infantry forces before the MCV just runs for the hills. Harvester refinery does go down. Toxic commander is going to have to reposition and fight a different way. Egyptian Rusher is gonna be able to take over the middle of the map pretty much completely unopposed. 
and Cardinal is potentially going to be able to expand up along the left edge of the map to the north. Cardinal and Egyptian Rusher may have kind of a free play at time as they are just going to be the only ones not really engaged in any fighting. Well, I guess this Twin Blade is uh, being a little bit annoying here as Basile is going to be taking over this Oil Derrick, taking it away from Egyptian Rusher and also going to be potentially harassing some Harvesters with that Tesla Trooper, although this Twin Blade flying a little bit too close to the Javelins. It does survive. The Apollo will get the kill there. And no, just barely unloads that Tesla Trooper in time. He's going to get the kill on a couple of units before eventually going down. Vindicator and the Peacekeeper will be able to clean up that Tesla Trooper eventually, but uh, could just force himself into that Tesla Trooper's building. Go for the one-to-one -one trade there. Refinery getting established. The Toxic Commander thinks that he can take this position. Not actually sure. Is that a green Tesla coil? I think it is a green Tesla coil coming up. So it is going to be Tesla coil wars. Basile and Toxic Commander going to be joining forces against Xena here in the Tesla coil wars in the south or on the right edge of the map, I guess. Walls getting broken down. Terror Drone gets the infect on one of Egyptian Rusher's harvesters. Basile has taken this left corner, so the uh, the left side of the map is not going to be taken by Cardinal, at least not initially. I thought it was going to be kind of free play for Cardinal. And look at that, a battle bunker getting established. Basile going to be building a battle bunker, possibly just dropping five, uh, five flak troopers inside of it and then just having a very strong anti-air defense there. Engineer is going to be going for the oil derricks, and that's going to be three oil derricks for Basile. He did lose the middle of the map one where he took it away from Egyptian Russia, but our Egyptian Russia has taken it back now. So it is still going to be three oil derricks, though, for Basile, which is very nice for him. Bridges getting eliminated. This one in the south did last a little bit longer than the one in the north, which got blasted away right at the start of the game. Twin Blades and Bullfrogs here from Blue Claire. Going to be putting some pressure on Cardinal. And it uh, looks like they want to be fighting both teams at once as much as they can. And for the current moment, there is literally nothing here. This War Factory has produced very little for Cardinal. So Blue Claire is going to be getting some free damage there. Apollo does go down. Twin Blades gets a kill on that Terror Drone. And only three Twin Blades, so it does take a while to actually kill off buildings. You may not want to place the... Oh, no, it is going to be a Bullfrog right out of there. So the Twin Blades are going to be able to trade out against that Bullfrog. Second Bullfrog may get the kill on both of these Twin Blades. They're pretty low on health. An Egyptian Rusher throws down the Multigunner Turret. Going to get the kill on the Terror Drone as well. Nice hit there for... Egyptian Rusher to get that kill. Egyptian Rusher up to four refineries. Hasn't taken the fifth one. This is a pretty safe refinery to take. And Toxic Commander has been completely kicked out of his original main base. His MCV is somewhere out on the map, or maybe he's crushed it down. Okay, no, he's got the Crusher Crane in the north, so he can potentially crush it down, get some cash back. V4 is already out on the map for Xena. Apollo or MIGs showing up as well. This refinery may not be long for this world as this V4 closes in. Dreadnoughts also out on the map. Blue Claire going to uh, start it up early. This double Soviet team, Green and Cyan, going right for artillery pretty much right away. One conscript gets crushed. The second one going to juke, going to run away. Going to be able to avoid that V4 for the current moment. Ooh, Xena going for the Kirov as well. But there is a Natasha in the north. Basile loses that refinery. I'm not sure exactly what to, but the refinery does get eliminated. MCV of Cardinal could be under threat. That Natasha could laser down the MCV and then snipe out the pilot. Natasha going to be slowly but surely working her way through these buildings. That MCV probably just needs to run for the hills now unless he's got a good plan to save it. I guess this Tesla coil is a pretty good plan to save it. 
Vindicators returning from their Rani run. Xena ready to protect this Kirov with those MiGs. Actually, the second Kirov, the first Kirov, is already cutting its way through the middle of the map. Takes out one refinery, takes out a second refinery. One flak cannon is not going to be enough to stop this one Kirov. So goodbye, flak cannon. Third bomb's the charm. Big showing up in Force Twin Blades as well. The Twin Blade Kirov combo is pretty good as the MCV for Toxic Commander continues to escape further and further to the north. Egyptian Rusher is going to need something with a little bit more firepower. Javelin Soldier is a good choice here. He is going to be able to poke away at that Kirov and eventually take it down. He may lose this. Yeah, he's going to lose the. Uh, the multi-gunner turret, but he at least gets the first Kirov. The second Kirov is ready to move in. Basile going to be pressuring Cardinal and actually just moving right in. So Basile's Natasha was not the only thing that was attacking down the left side of the map. Natasha does eventually go down. And, uh, well, the toxins will clear out the buildings. It's going to be a Tesla coil and a flak cannon at the same time. So Cardinal is going to be in a lot of trouble if he loses his super reactor. That may completely reset his tech and stop him from being able to produce anything more of note. An additional Tesla coil getting established, a naval yard as well. Basile is going big as the engineer caps that super reactor. And this is going to be difficult for Cardinal to stay in the game much longer. He's going to have a threat from a blue. Well, okay, never mind. <laughs> it's just conscripts. I saw all the dots on the minimap, and I thought it was something a little bit more threatening. But these conscripts will, I guess, eventually Molotov cocktail their way through the buildings. Four refinery getting targeted down. Egyptian Rusher going to be tar targeting down Toxic Commander. And honestly, if Xena and Blue Claire can just kind of hang out in the corner of the map, then Egyptian Rusher and Cardinal might end up just fighting Basile and Toxic Commander and eliminating each other. There isn't really very much left for Blue Cardinal, or for Cardinal, excuse me. He does get a Crusher Crane and a War Factory onto the high ground, but he's about to have no income. No income at all. Vacuum Imploder from Blue Claire. Vacuum Imploder from Xena. So a double Vacuum Imploder from our team in the southern, southeastern corner, I guess. Naval Yard getting targeted down. First Naval Yard goes down. Bullfrog gets eliminated as well. That Bullfrog driving to his own doom. Second Bullfrog does show up, but it's going to cost a reset of that Naval Yard. Naval Yard was more than halfway done, so it'll be a little bit of a delay before that Naval Yard can be established. But Xena and Blue Claire continuing to move forward. Cardinal has a couple of units or a couple of buildings left in the middle of the map, but no income. No income at all. There are some free refineries to potentially be taken, but Egyptian Rusher and Cardinal are going to have to kind of split the middle of the map between themselves. Conscripts going down. Mass V4 cutting everything else down. Toxic Commander has a couple of buildings and units left, at least one refinery, two refineries almost. I think the second refinery is about to get targeted down. Basile with his own vacuum imploder there in the north. Mass MiGs, a couple of twin blades from Xena. Looks like that, uh, that Kirov did eventually go down. The MCV gets eliminated though. And V4s now turning their way north. Blue Claire just slowly but surely, and actually that Natasha, terrible time to try and jump into that building. Natasha may be fighting Natasha in just a moment here. Mass conscript here as well. Natasha does evade Natasha. Toxins come in, clearing out, but it's gonna be the fight of the snipes. Twin Blades rushing in. They're gonna go for the Bullfrogs before going for Natasha. As, uh, well, there a mix comes in, clears out that bullfrog. Ooh. Basile on the right side of the map trying to emulate what Blue Claire is doing. It looks like Natasha has jumped into a building. Twin Blade's going to try and dislodge this Natasha. Will get the kill. Nicely done there by Xena and Blue Claire.
long distance harvesting for Egyptian ru rusher. These southern refineries getting dislodged is a bit unfortunate for the team in the middle of the map. Egyptian Rush are going to get a kill on another refinery. This time it's one of Xena's refineries, though. Super Reactor in the north for Toxic Commander. He's got his one, two refineries. He's got his MCV still around, his barracks as well. So, I mean, he can produce Tesla Troopers. Not much more than that. Natasha going to get a snipe. Snipe on an APOC tank, maybe? Might have already gotten a snipe on an APOC tank. Not enough time to kill the super reactor, though. Ooh, almost baits the V4 rockets into the APOC tanks, though. The snipe must have already come down. And Natasha, like, you know, stutter stepping away. Oh, the MiG gets called off at the last second. Whatever that bomber is called. Satellites completely miss the V4's twin blades. Going to be going for the kill on the Bullfrogs. Another Natasha going down. Basile just cannot keep his Natasha's alive as that Natasha finally catches a couple of V4 rockets to the faith, grinds them up in her teeth, and goes down to them. Twin Blades will clear out the APOC tanks, having killed off the rest of the Twin Blades. The MCB is gonna lose a decent amount of health. Uh, APOC tanks going down, but not fast enough. And the Twin Blades do use most of their rockets on the APOC tank that isn't going to splash damage down that MCV. But the MCV gets targeted anyways. The Crusher Crane does not finish. And it's going to be a War Factory reestablished in the bottom left-hand corner of the map. The V4s go down. The Twin Blades win the day. And meanwhile, on the right side of the map, Xena pressing up to the north just going to find some kind of way to push Basile back. Basile fighting on two fronts at the same time. Toxic Commander and Cardinal have not played much of a role over the last couple of minutes of this game. It has been up to uh, their teammates, Egyptian Rusher and Basile, to really shoulder most of the burden. Another Natasha emerges for Basile. He keeps trying. He believes in second, third, fourth, and fifth chances as this Natasha is maybe going to go for a snipe on a fully heroic V4. And nope, once again, Natasha will get targeted down before doing anything. Toxic Commander has been defeated, hands everything over to Basile as Basile has been beset by the forces of Xena. And it may come down to, oh, another Kirov goes down in the middle of the map. It may come down to Egyptian Rusher just getting a free play tool in the middle of the map. He gets a free play card, and he just doesn't have to do anything. Toxins come in. They miss the Tesla Trooper, but they get anything else that gets produced by that barracks. Blue Claire finally making some meaningful progress on the left side of the map. The Twin Blades are here, and it's going to be a full-scale full scale sell-off on the left side. Basile fighting alone, fighting a 1v2v2. Cardinal rebuilt an MCV, has a refinery, and is long-distance mining from about 10 miles away with two harvesters. <laughs> I guess if you built like six, maybe eight harvesters, you would have pretty decent income from one refinery. But uh, that would be a long time before that really paid for itself. Super Reactor gets sold off and gets sold off completely. Everything else gets canceled. Vacuum Imploder gets called in and it's 40 seconds before Basile can fire off his own Vacuum Imploder. But Blue Claire is ready. I guess drop it here, take down the Super Reactor. Maybe even uh, bring in your Twin Blades as well to finish everything else off. 30 seconds left. The Twin Blades going to be going for the kill on that Vacuum Imploder, I assume. The Bullfrogs are going to push them back. Natasha is here. Ooh, Natasha might get the snipe on that APOC tank. Just go for the snipe on the APOC and then maybe even pilot it herself. Terror Drone gets the infect on one of the Bullfrogs. APOC tank goes down. Bullfrog getting targeted. The Terror Drone is going to get the kill. And Terror Drone is uh, not going to get the kill on anything else because that is a friendly Terror Drone. Vacuum Imploder firing off just to the south of the position. Takes down the V4 rockets. 
And Blue Claire still has his beef. He does still have his vacuum imploder. MCV, Toxic Commander's old MCV could be the next target of Natasha. Sickle is here. Sickle barely won't get the kill on Natasha. She stands her ground and she gets another kill for her bomber. Bullfrog running over Natasha's head, but it's not enough. And Bullfrog's going to body block and absorb Natasha. Twin Blades showing up at the last second and targeting that down. Egyptian Rusher finally making some headway. A couple of Vindicators, a couple of Dolphins clearing out the waters below his base just to the south of where he cares about. The Assault Destroyer does go down to the crush of that APOC tank. A bit unfortunate for Egyptian Rusher. APOC tanks going to be targeting down water naval units. Another Terror Drone gets born. Another Terror Drone gets eliminated. Natasha, I think, getting eliminated perhaps there. No Bullfrogs to save these Sickles. Aircraft carrier for Egyptian Rusher, so he's gotten up to Tier 3. He's got enough cash to get an aircraft carrier and to start making some bombing runs against Basile. Still no use of that vacuum imploder. Now might be the time. Try and get the kill on that MCV. Stop it from running away. Or maybe even up here on those Sickles and the War Factory. I'm not sure what the plan is here for that vacuum imploder. It seems like there have been some decent opportunities to use it. Could even use it here if he scouts that area. If he sees all of the uh, high-tech units there just waiting to be absorbed. All right, the Sickle Twin Blade Bullfrog Army moving forward. Iron Curtain fires off, saves the V4s. And a bullfrog as well. I think that's actually Basile's bullfrog catching a little bit of that uh, Iron Curtain. And the Iron Curtain is actually going to wear off before these units get to safety. Uh, unless there's Twin Blades here ready to kill all of these Sickles. But no, it is going to be a Iron Curtain bullfrog that does save those V4s. And, uh, well, three V4s, one of them may escape. No, the... the Twin Blades don't commit to the attack. Cryogeddon firing off. The EMP will lock down these units. Double lock down there as the Cryogeddon and the EMP keeps them from moving. But is there anything here to actually get the kill on them? V4s all go down. The Twin Blades were not able to save them. Too bad. I have to hand it to Basile, a 1v2v2, and Basile has not given up. Basile has found a way to kill V4s with sickles and to bide his time. Egyptian Rusher with another aircraft carrier. No expansion down to the water. He had that command hub there for a little while, but he was never able to actually take the expansion, which does make sense. It's very close to his opponents. Bullfrog's getting some shots off there. Migs as well, trying to show up for the defense. Twin Blades moving in. Too many Bullfrogs, though. It's going to be a lot of Twin Blade losses, even if they jump on the Bullfrogs, which they do not. Vacuum Imploder would be a nice time to use it on this army. We'll see where Blue Claire wants to use it. There it is. He's going to try and catch the army, but it's going to be a little bit too late for most of the army. He didn't lead them enough. Satellites getting called in as well. A couple of hammer tanks going there, going down there. Magnetic Singularity catches a bullfrog or two, and it's going to be the Twin Blades up for the rest of it. Two bullfrogs left. The Twin Blades more than a match for that one bullfrog that remains, and the hammer tanks will get cleaned up. Meanwhile, Egyptian Rusher trying to make some kind of headway, trying to do something active on the map. Cardinal has rebuilt uh, a decent number of buildings, but not necessarily any army, not necessarily anything that can actually move out onto the map and do something. He is going to go for a mass twin blade, I assume, since he's going for an airfield. That is the easiest army to use, perhaps, in, uh, in Red Alert 3. 
Twin Blades and a couple of MIGs if you need them, but mostly you just run away with the Twin Blades. Another Vacuum Imploder firing off here. This time, Xena catches the entire Navy. Oh no, Xena sacrificing a couple of Twin Blades as well. That is a bit unfortunate. The Vacuum Imploder does not care. And Xena is now going to call in satellites? No, okay, it's the Magnetic Singularity trying to shut down that naval yard. And uh, the Apollos, the Hydrofoils, no Apollos here actually, so the Twin Blades could just try and jump on the Hydrofoil. But the naval yard will come back online, another aircraft carrier may be produced. Meanwhile, Twin Blades on the left side of the map, V4s as well, a couple of Bullfrogs from Blue Claire starting to make some progress. There's a Snipe, one V4 loses its pilot. The War Factory goes down. 26 seconds on the clock, and Blue Claire is making a final push to try and end Basile, or at least end the Vacuum Imploder. 15 seconds, the Iron Curtain fires off, maybe a little bit too early. Basile trying to push his own units into the Iron Curtain, go for the kills as well, and these V4s just need to target down this Vacuum Imploder. Two seconds left, one second left. Will he fire it in time? No, the last couple of rockets will impact, and that's going to be it. The V4 get the kill. The vacuum imploder does not fire off. Two vacuum imploders are left, Xena and Blue Claire, who at this point feel like they have a huge advantage, although Basile is going to once again kill his opponent's army. The V4s might get the last couple of rockets. Yes, they kill a War Factory. They're going to get half the health of a second War Factory, and Sickles just do not kill units very fast. And goodbye, War Factory. It almost goes down, leaves it with about a quarter of its health left. Those V4s doing big, big damage, but not enough to kill off that War Factory. Terror Drone goes for the scout. Maybe they can call in satellites or something. And it's going to be Mass Twin Blades coming in once again. Doesn't actually go for the War Factory. Tries to go for the Bullfrogs. If he can jump on the Bullfrogs, which he does, he can get the rest of the army. Okay, this should be it for Basile. There's the sell-off, even though even the MCB goes down. Everything else gets sold. A couple of reactors. And finally, we are down to two. Uh, Basile must have a couple of buildings left somewhere. <laughs> the map just littered with Basile dots. One reactor right there. So he's going to keep his units around for the current moment. Kills off the oil derricks? I'm not actually sure. Basile still in this game. Okay, there's the sell-off. There's the defeated sign. And that will do it. Basile has been defeated. It is Egyptian Rusher and Cardinal versus Xena and Blue Claire. Xena, who has taken the top right-hand corner of the map. Blue Claire, who has taken the bottom left-hand corner of the map. Northeast and Southwest under their control. Refinery is going to try to be taken on the water. I mean, you can try. I don't know if it's necessarily going to work, but I guess if you kill uh, if you kill Egyptian Rusher, then it will work. Then it'll work quite nicely. No hydrofoils nearby to defend. Double naval yard pumping out aircraft carriers for Egyptian Rusher. But with all of the aircraft anti-air going down, these twin blades will be able to hit and run. Be able to take down all of those. Ooh, Egyptian Russia and Cardinal locking each other out of this refinery, out of that ore node. A bit unfortunate there. Naval Yard goes down. Egyptian Russia, who never was able to really expand much off of this island, who has been at an economic disadvantage for a long, long time. It feels sort of inevitable. 44 seconds on one of the vacuum imploders, 1 minute 40 on the other one. Blue Claire and Xena are going to be ready to go, grouping all of the Twin Blades together. I don't know why. I don't know if he was hoping to just jump on something. and I don't know what his, what his goal there was. All right, the Mass Twin Blade is here, killing Harvester after Harvester. And it will finally dislodge these two Harvesters. Mig's going to be able to get a couple of kills here, shutting down Egyptian Rusher's build radius, or at least trying to. Bullfrogs do show up, and that's going to be it for uh, really any active fight. 
Twin Blades do show up for Cardinal, but they get absolutely blasted out of the sky, and the Twin Blades and the Bullfrogs are just too strong of a combo. A couple of Hydrofoils are here in the north, but it's sort of not mattering. Athena Cannons go down. The bridge gets collapsed as well, and it's 40 seconds left on the second Vacuum Imploder. I think uh, we probably know where this game is going for the rest of it. Twin Blades showing up. They get the kill on that MCV. Satellite's going to be getting called down on top of nothing. And that will be the end of this game. Xena and Blue something. Blue Claire going to be able to take it. Uh, I guess we'll get the last vacuum imploder. Got a couple of seconds left. Targeting down your allies MCB. Wow. Blue, Egyptian rusher, he knows that it's over, and he's literally just killing his ally. Uh, I guess that's one strategy that you can go for. MCV goes down. War Factory will go down. Even the Twin Blade getting targeted. Egyptian Rusher and Blue Cardinal just, like, calling off Cardinal. I keep calling him Blue Cardinal. Calling off their ally ship, their heist, as he just blasts his ally. I assume these guys are good friends. If this is a randoms game and these guys don't know each other, then uh, that is a definitely... Not a cool thing to do, but I assume these guys are good friends that they, you know, are chatting and uh, hanging out together. There's going to be the sell-off. Cardinal leaving the game. Technically not yet. Okay, there's the sell-off. And still in the game. There we go. All right, Cardinal has been defeated. And there we go. Egyptian Rusher has been defeated. And that will do it for that one. And my review of that game is, it's okay. All right, one more Cardinal. Pinko the Bear posting a whole bunch of crazy emotes in chat. One last replay to get to. This has definitely not been a stellar day of replays. You got one more game if you're just tuning in now. And, of course, the VOD will probably... Ooh. Oh, Libra was the Cyan player. Okay, okay. That makes sense. Oh, Yuna was Xena, and Libra was... Okay, that explains why they were way better than the other players. Are you aiming for Twitch affiliate or partner? No. I mean, if I end up getting it, but I don't know that I have any streams planned after this one. Boom Vinyl, thank you for the nice words. Yeah, let's see. The 2v2 was all right. Maybe I'll... Oh, maybe I'll keep in the 2v2, the joke game. The Cabana Republic game was fun. At least that one was goofy. Uh, these last 2v2s, like, I guess they had action, but they were just kind of boring. But I guess they had a decent amount of action. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep the whole thing in. All right. I drank my tea. We've got a couple of sips of tea left over. All right, are you fellas ready? Give a hey -o in the chat if you're ready to see even more Carvel action. Welcome to game six of this subscriber replay showcase, the last match. We've had some very aggressively mediocre games in this batch. And let's do our intros in the normal order as the orange going for Crane. Power of Crane. This is Blue Magoo. Their teammate. Is it to the south? Oh, yes, it is to the south. I guessed correctly this as the Purple Empire is Venito. As the blue in, though, as the yellow in the very south, this is Prince Salah. 
and their teammate as the blue allies who have already gone down to the low ground. This is Mystique making a comeback from another match that we've already seen. Meanwhile, as the Cyan Empire, this is Voto Canal. And their teammate as the Red Soviets dropping a super reactor in their base. This is Two Act. I don't know about uh, all of these names, but... Oh, pressing the wrong buttons there for a moment. I don't know about all of these names. Some of these are going to be a little bit harder to pronounce, but Voto Canal, maybe I'll just call him Canal Two Act. I don't know what ADJ stands for in front of it. Adjunct to act. I don't know. Multi-gunner turret push coming in from Mystique. Prince as well. And let's see, it's a Soviet Empire versus a Soviet Empire versus a double allied. So one team has double cryogenin coming your way eventually. And the other teams just have boring support powers. Multi-gunner turret forces the shutdown of that na of that second refinery. Mecha Bay is up, but this is a one refinery Mecha Bay with the MCV running for the hills. So this is a good start for Mystique and Prince. They are able to dislodge one of their opponents basically immediately. Canal and Act feel like they have the best setup because they're going to be able to take over all of the expansions in the middle of the map. And we'll see how far Act can go. He's already got his super reactor up and running. He's already got a safety airfield, and he is beginning that twin blade spam. So he is going to spam twin blades until the day he dies, until his last breath. He should be spamming those twin blades more and more and more. But Voto Canal and Two Act feel like they can take a lot of refineries very quickly, and that will at least potentially set them up for a good late game. We'll see what they're able to actually do, but it'll at least set them up for a good late game. Blue Magoo is taking an expansion in the north, but of course this leaves Venito completely exposed and open. A couple of Tangus do manage to escape. If he goes for the trade, he might be able to kill a couple of Harvesters before going down. He's going to fly over the middle of the map, so I don't know. We'll see if he's able to escape the Twin Blades and the MiGs that are potentially being built by 2-Act. Mystique trying to keep an eye on those Tangus, and actually they both go down. So, yeah, things are a really bad start for Venito, who has one refinery, no production facilities, and uh, he's probably going to be losing his one refinery relatively soon. Apollo from Mystique getting uh, taken a little bit of damage from those Tangus as it passes over the middle of the map. Or Refinery on the low ground from Blue Magoo going to be taking damage from that tank buster. Two Oil Derricks claims, claimed by Canal. No one has claimed the third one in the top left-hand corner of the map. Third Oil Derrick there. No one has claimed that Oil Derrick just yet. Ooh, trying to block off that tank buster with a reactor, but it's not quite working. He may be able to preserve the build radius, but of course the tank buster can just kill the reactor after the refinery goes down. All right, well, Voto Canal starting to lose some of his oil derricks. Harvester is still active, is still working. Somehow. MCV on the move. The Prince heads to the north. Harvesters getting healed up. One of them taking a lot of damage. And the reactor was not able to survive. And that refinery is going to go down. Nicely done. Immediately to heroic status for that tank buster. And the refinery goes down. Okay, so let's see. Venito has no refineries. Mecha Bay, couple of power plants, an MCV. If he can't get out a refinery or at least an oil derrick, he literally won't be able to build anything out of his Mecha Bay. He is going for the corner oil derrick, so he will have some income. He will be able to get himself back in this game over the long term. Prince is getting pushed around. These flak troopers going for the kill on the MCV, but the MCV 
does get the crush on the Flak Trooper. Tesla Coil is going to be forcing this Allied player away. And the Barracks plus the pet Tesla Coil going to make this a difficult spot to hold. MCV gets infected. Blue Magoo going to be forcing this MCV away and far away to get repairs. It's going to take a while for that MCV to be back on the offense. Voda Canal gets a decent number of Tangus up and running. Uh, Vindicators, I think, cleaning up that Tesla coil. And the MCB is like, all right, we've reset. We're heading back up to take this area once again. Wow, they never took these. Oh, okay. Voto Canal and Two Act never took these expansions. Just now going to be getting that expansion up and running. I guess he has these two expansions. So it's been four refineries for Voto Canal. Going to be six refineries relatively soon but we'll see if he's able to hold on to these refineries for very long. They might get bombed out of existence relatively soon. Twin Blades from 2-Act. This guy dropped an airfield and a super reactor very early on in this game, so he has been behind in the... Oh, no! Benito! Oh, no! He has no refineries that are, like, safe and easy to take. If he takes this one, that tank buster might just turn around and go for the kill. Blue Magoo looking to retake this oil derrick, or I guess take it for the first time, actually. And the Tangu is going to be moving in. Oh! Voda Canal loses all of his oil derricks. The one in the south gets taken out. The one in the north gets captured. The others get eliminated, or... Uh, yeah, they just all get eliminated. Finally, two act has taken that oil derrick. Bear getting targeted down. Prince has taken the other expansion, Benito's original expansions, where the walls still stand. Blue Magoo has rebuilt a decent amount. Engineer, no, what is that? Where is that engineer going? I get the feeling that Venito doesn't actually have enough cash to get a refinery up and running. He could tell his ally to sell off one of the refineries. That's the only way Venito is going to get back in the game. So it feels kind of hopeless. It feels like it's already a 2v2, even though Blue Magoo is still in this. And Blue Magoo has five expansions. Five refineries is a, definitely a good setup, but not enough to necessarily 1v2. I guess if Mystique and Prince just, like, fall apart, like they are right now, there was just a huge amount of air units going down. But uh, Mystique and the Prince can probably afford that much more easily than Blue Magoo can. Vodo Canal coming in here. It's going to be a lot of Twin Blades as well. Two Act is going to be comboing with Vodo Canal, and our first super weapon is out on the map. Good number of MiGs show up here. Going to be able to claim one, two Twin Blades at least. A third after that. And it's going to be Mass Tango, which just eviscerate these MiGs. One MiG goes down in a split second. Oh, and a Cryoblast right on top of that heart refinery. Doesn't actually catch the node, but I don't actually know. Okay, a building under construction does not get frozen more easily. I think in terms of freezing, it counts as a fully constructed building. And this is a lot of Apollos, but this is way, way, way more Tangus. Although not all of the Tangus were engaging, so that was actually as good of that engagement could have gone for Mystique. Mystique should have gotten absolutely dumpstered by all of these Tangus. And Mystique traded reasonably well against those Tangus, taking a good number of the Tangus down. But it's even more Tangus out on the map. One refinery goes down, a second one rises to take its place, and this refinery's almost gotten bombed out of existence by pure Vindicators. Bullfrog showing up, causing the mass transform of those Tangus. MiG's going to be able to clear out the remainder of the Tangus. Twin Blades are going to turn their guns now on the Tangus, and that was a bit of a mistake for Voto Canal. He needed to get out of the situation, but he thought he could actually follow it up with some damage, and he could not. Those Tangus just going down in pretty big numbers. Voto Canal has lost a huge cash value of Tangus in a very short amount of time. Prince going to be targeting down the MCV. He's got Dolphins. He's got Hydrofoils. He is ready to shut down any Tesla coils that get established to stop his Dolphins. And these guys actually all trading who's attacking who. They're all kind of just blasting each other. 
and actually uh, this blue yellow color combination looks great in the bottom right hand corner of the map red cyan is another classic color combo as well but that blue yellow looks good down in the corner there's something like very aesthetically pleasing about it Mass Tangu is here, and he is going to blast through all of Mystique's Apollos. Goodbye, Apollos. And actually, no, Prince shows up with his own Apollos. He may actually be able to win this fight. He's got the fight on the left side. His Apollos win that one, but he does not win the fight on the right side. The Chronosphere is ready just as Mystique places a Proton Collider as well. There we go, the Proton Collider and the Chronosphere are very close to each other. Could be targeted down by some Twin Blades, we shall see. Harvester goes down, Voto Canal going to be losing that Harvester, losing some of that income. The MCV did get eliminated and eventually that Engineer may get killed off as well. Vindicators go down, the big transform from Voto Canal to clean up that Command Hub. And the Chronosphere, where does it go? It goes out onto the water where these Tangus are surrounded. The Spectrum Tower is tearing them apart, and that Black Hole armor barely even touched. That Assault Destroyer is like, what just scratched me? Because it wasn't more than a scratch on the paint. Prince drops a multi-gunner turret, but at the last possible second, and then immediately the Command Hub ends up going down. Twin Blades in huge numbers, but it's uh, several, everyone is fighting each other, which is not good for Blue Magoo, who is uh, who is in this game. Benito has come back. Oh, he captured, he captured some Soviet, uh, some Soviet re refineries, and Benito gets himself back in this game. He steals everything from 2-Act. Two 2-Act two used to have a decent income, and now 2-Act is looking a little bit silly with only these two, maybe three refineries under his control. Apollo's swinging through the Prince, taking a scout around the southern edge of the map, trying to see if there are any easy, soft targets, and there are indeed. Benito gets the capture on that MCV, okay, and sells it off. That's why that engineer was just hanging out there. So, uh... The Engineer eventually does go down to act, forced to kill the Engineer from his own MCV. And Venito with the sick Engineer caps, great play by Venito to get himself back in this game and actually give himself a fighting chance. He got that Mega Bay out a long time ago, but it has been sitting essentially derelict for a long, long time. And, I mean, it is back into being a 2v2v2. In a couple of minutes, Venito is actually going to have enough units to do something on the map. And this is where it feels like Voto Canal and 2-Act should just join forces and kill off this stuff in the north. They need to clear out that corner of the map. Twin Blades from Blue Magoo get the kill on a couple of... Tsunami tanks. Tangus do finally show up from Voto Canal. He's going to be able to kill off a couple of these Twin Blades. The Tangus not going for the kill on the Twin Blades. They're going to transform for the Bullfrogs, but the Strikers show up just in time, and the Strikers helping to get the kill there, pushing away those Twin Blades. Mass, uh, a couple of Sentry Bombers able to clean up that refinery in the south. Two Sentry Bombers, something about a yellow player and Sentry Bombers. Last game and now this game as well. All right, the Oil Derrick has gone down, but Venito has been able to get himself back on his feet. Chronosphere is ready once again. Tangus reforming. And I mean, just building Mass Tangu is probably the best situation for Venito. He has come back from the absolute brink of destruction. And uh, teching up to Tier 2, he probably he can't really afford it. I don't know how effective he would be. So just going Mass Tangu and supporting your ally is probably the best thing that he can do. Tangu is definitely not great at killing off buildings, but at least you can help cut down... Another engineer. This guy just building too many engineers. 
He's just still going for more engineers. Venito is just hoping to capture all of his opponent's buildings and make his comeback complete by taking over the map with pure engineer. A cool sub forces the sell off of a naval yard, but these twin blades almost getting the kill on that Akula sub. Not quite enough to get the kill on the Akula, but they do get a decent amount of damage. One Apollo goes down, Mystique losing that Apollo to that uh, to that striker, but then the striker does go down. Burst drone going for the scout. He's like, "Hey, is this uh, is this capturable?" And it is indeed. Nothing really there defending, and if you don't pay attention, then there won't be anything to alert you that uh, that your refinery has been captured by an engineer. Javelin soldiers do get dislodged and then mauled by those bears. Twin blades from Blue Magoo able to snipe an Athena cannon. Nicely done there by Blue Magoo. Gets a kill on an Athena cannon basically for free. Three aircraft carriers. The mass twin blade versus the mass aircraft carrier. Dreadnought gets the catch, and he's going to get the last couple of shots. No, I don't think he is. Yes, he is. Barely forces the sell off, but the explosion comes out anyways. And Natasha jumps out of that bullfrog as the freeze comes down. Vindicators looking for their targets. They're going to go for the bullfrogs and a couple of uh, the live bullfrogs as well. Refinery is going to get targeted down. Natasha going to get a kill there. Basically for free. And now they realize, oh, hey, there's actually a Natasha here and a lot of Tangus as well. Point defense drones come in. IFV, I'm not sure what that's about. Oh, it's a Proton Collider. And that IFV getting the scout off as Mystique clears out that army. The Tangus all go down. Natasha goes down, but the Twin Blades will find their mark. Two Act is going to clear out the water. One Apollo doesn't have nearly enough bullets for all of these Twin Blades. More Apollos showing up, but Bodo Canal is going to be able to defend his ally with his Tangus. Mass Tangus, the point defense drones helping them survive against the Apollos, and the Apollos will reign supreme. But those Tangus trading out their lives uselessly. The last 20 Tangus that went down, it feels like, got nothing for it. There were no traded kills, and it's going to be Hydrofoils tearing apart these Twin Blades as they try and eliminate those, oh my gosh, massacre of Twin Blades. An insane free gift there as Two Act has been defeated. He didn't even get the last aircraft carrier. That was just an extinction event as Vodo Canal is now in a 1v2v2 and Venito, who looked like he was completely dead or basically dead, has had like a complete comeback. Vodo Canal, I now have very little faith in to be able to win this game. He's basically out of it. He's got uh, Empire and Soviet tech to some degree, but I don't think in any way that really matters. I think Vodo Canal and Two Act may be our first team eliminated from this 2v2v2. Chopper VXs are here. They're gonna be able to get a kill on a couple of Blue, Blue Magoos. Uh, APOC Tank's gonna get a kill on his airfield as well. And Vodo Canal, who himself is about to be eliminated from this game, is just doing pretty big damage to uh, Blue Magoo as well. He's even gonna get the Bullfrog there so these strikers can continue their attacks. And this just leaves both teams even weaker. Mystique and Prince basically just have this game handed to them. A couple of flak troopers will be able to clean up these last couple of strikers, but the damage has been done. The airfield, the war factory getting eliminated, completely resetting the tech if this tier three goes down. I guess the super reactor is still here, but this is a lot of Tangus as Vodo Canal is just going for as much damage as he can possibly do which is not going to help him win the game. Voto Canal has essentially a 0% chance of winning this game, but he is lowering Blue Magoo's and Benito's chance of winning this game, basically also to zero. The two weakest teams eliminating each other. 
two act giving away all of those twin blades. He thought he could jump on top of those aircraft carriers, get a swift kill before the hydrofoils eliminated all of his units, but it was not true. And he just lost all of those twin blades. And then from that point forward, Vodo Canal and Two Act were, you know, possibly the weakest team in the game. But now Blue Magoo and Venito are, you know, they're not much stronger. They've lost a lot of their infrastructure. Venito had just been able to rebuild a decent amount of stuff, and now it's pretty much it. All right, Vodo Canal and Two Act, they have both been eliminated. Mystique and Prince versus Blue Magoo and Venito. I think we can see where this one is going. Two guys just basically, like, killed each other. Near-death experience, and now a Cryogeddon coming in. Aircraft carrier is here as well. The War Factory doesn't get frozen. The refinery gets unfrozen before it actually gets broken apart, but this is just close to hopeless. Mass Tangu transition, and this is going to be a kill off of the entire army of Prince. So some time has been bought here, but how much really? A couple of IFVs do manage to sneak through anyways. The War Factory gets killed a second time. It gets rebuilt a third time, and Blue Magoo just does not have much going on. The IFVs all go down, but the aircraft carrier has not been stopped. Fortunately for Blue Magoo and Venito, the aircraft carrier is like trying to kill Tangus for some reason. It's not actually killing any of these structures that matter a good bit more, but the sentry bomber will find the kill on the refinery. Half of the damage on the war factory as well, and the second refinery is now getting targeted down by those aircraft carriers. And the Tangus get caught by the Apollos. Too many Apollos, just way, way, way too many Apollos. Prince and Mystique going to be able to sweep up this game without too much more delay. 30 seconds on the Proton Collider, and that will uh, pretty much signal the end of all things. Second Proton Collider coming up. Prince takes the middle of the map. Mystique going to be able to get a reset on their Proton Collider by blasting away at their opponent. Spectrum Tower kills a under-construction Tesla Coil, as it turns out. And there's the kill of the MCV. And that is, uh, you know, it's basically curtains for Blue Magoo and Venito. They just are still in it, uh, technically. Not practically, but technically. And, uh, you know, the comeback is always possible, but it's pretty slim pickings at this point. I would love a Eureka comeback, but uh, that's, you know, pretty difficult. Blue Magoo has been defeated, hands everything over to Venito, and Venito is now in the strongest position that he ever has been. I mean, that would be an amazing comeback. Venito, who is basically, who almost died very early on in this game, has relocated from the right side of the map to the top left-hand corner, basically. And, uh, well, with that super reactor going down, it's going to be low power mode for Venito. The barracks was just enough to bring it back online, though, so gets the crush of that. Looks like another base structure went down, so that will be the end of that uh, online production. Low power mode, once again, the plague of Venito. And I guess this is the the long, slow death. Cryogeddon going to be firing off. Prince is like, I'm going to protect my aircraft carrier. I can make it through that Cryogeddon, but you cannot. All right, sentry bombers. Come, wait, what are you doing? Just a kill on, like, one bullfrog. Cryocopter is coming through. All right, uh, Sentry Bomber is going to clean up the War Factory. Tangu goes down. Cryocopter is forcing the cell off of that Crusher Crane. Refinery in the south has been taken. Uh, Ten grand left in the other one. Only three grand left in that one. Most of these are probably depleted. Yeah, there really is not anything that can be done. Vacuum Exploder. Nope. Proton Collider fires off. Cleans up that expansion in the top left. 
three minutes left on the other Proton Collider. Mecha Bay gets targeted. The Chronosphere is ready. Just shoot down the Cryocopter on top of the building. I think Cryocopters count as debris. Okay, two Vindicators are coming. Bomb split time, baby. I would laugh if he sent both Vindicators after one power plant. Mecha Bay gets sold off. Power plants go down. Da 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 da. I mean, unless there's some unbelievable, amazing play, it's basically over, but Venito hasn't left yet. Oh, MCV and two assault destroyers, plus a splash of water. A Cryogeddon going to be freezing that building as it gets sold off. Cryocopter is going to be freezing everything else. And a shrink down of an assault destroyer so he can move a little bit more quickly. Last couple of structures, I think, are up here in the north. I guess he's got this. Uh, no, that's nothing. Ah, he's got this refinery here. Athena Cannon targeted down these random Imperial Warriors. I'm guessing these guys must be just typing in the chat. Cryogeddon freezes that. I don't, I don't know why these guys are still in this game. Yeah, they must be, like, in voice chat or something. Sometimes you'll get a big group, you know, six friends all together in voice chat. So even if the game is over, they're all still just, like, talking and having a good time. And so then these games get extended out. Okay, there we go. Benito has been defeated. GG. Woo! All right, we're done. And that will do it. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And this is Cybert signing out.